They're by the dog park and stuff like shop them. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, 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 because this looks like it's, um... Yeah. Um... It's Athenian way in that area. Yeah, because that's Captain Jack's. Yep. Yeah, right there. Interesting. So right next to the bridge. Yes. Bridge that's Lounge. The bridge and Bridge Lounge. Lounge. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, they used to see these as plug-ins. They didn't think of the name of the Bridge Lounge. <laughs> Until the flag changes in five years when it sells to somebody else and they paint it Western in Orange. Come on. You know that uh, that workshop that we had the other okay. night. That was. I mean, we didn't get maybe everything everybody wanted out of yeah, that. Well, that was pretty gosh darn good. We hit a lot of high points. Yeah, sure. we did. We didn't get off into the weeds. That's. I was afraid that that happens sometimes. Yeah. No weeds out there. A little bit of work. All right. I used to. Call to order the uh, May 16th meeting of the Tarpon Springs Planning and Zoning Board. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Seaman? Here. Mr. Chris Curtis? Here. Mr. Vesey? Here. Ms. Vigil? Here. Mr. Koulianos? Here. Mr. Zambellas? Here. Mr. Andriotis? Here. Uh, Okay, before we go into the approval of the minutes, I have a, a, a small item I'd like to in, insert here. It's just uh, the, I, I think the commission would like to change uh, item seven and item eight in position so that we can hear item seven is, is the last item. Uh, if, if the commission's or the board's in agreement on that, I need a motion and a second. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make a motion to to uh, swap them. I think it, for time purposes, I'd hate to have the uh, item number eight. Uh, the, the people here wait till the end of because seven is going to be, uh, I suspect, lengthy. Yep. Second that. Can we have a roll call? Mr. Zambella, I mean Mr. Andriotis. Yes. Mr. Zambellas. Yes. Mr. Kulianos. Yes. Ms. Vigil. Yes. Mr. Vesey. Yes. Mr. Kuskudis? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. All right. Uh, now uh, we're on to item number two, approval of minutes. We have the minutes from December 13th of 2021. Uh, can, <coughs> can we have a motion to approve those minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. I, I have a question first before. I know I wasn't here, but did you guys really start the meeting at 7 o'clock? On so there's a motion on the floor where you just get a second and then you guys can discuss the minutes. Sorry. Okay. I'll second the motion. Okay, and this was December 13th, so I think we were still doing 7, seven o'clock at that mm -hmm. time. Yeah. This is for December? No. Oh, yeah. Okay. The minute approval, okay. yes. And uh, just to interject, I think we'll be catching up on the rest of the minutes at your next meeting. We're a little bit behind, so. Okay. You'll have uh, probably three or four to do at the next meeting. Can, uh, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Andriotis? Yes. Mr. Zimbellas? Yes. Mr. Koulianos? Yes. Ms. Vigil? Yes. Mr. Vesey? Yes. Mr. Kuskudis? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. That brings us to item number three, the quasi-judicial announcement. Uh, could our attorney please ex explain the quasi-judicial procedures and read the announcement, please. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Planning and Zoning Board acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The Board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has, that has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Board is required by law to find against the applicant. 
Are there any members of the board wishing to disclose any ex parte communications or conflicts of interest this evening on any of the applications? Okay, anyone wishing to speak this evening, if you could please stand and be sworn in. You swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. So sworn. All right. Uh, item number four, application 2246, and item number five, application 21103, have been deferred to our June 20th, 2022 meeting. So that brings us down to item number six, application 22-40. It's conditional use approval to allow for a commercial recreation use, guided kayak tours in the T5B transect zone on or at 1060 North Pinellas Avenue. Uh, do we have a staff presentation, please? Okay, Ali Keene, Senior Planner at Planning and Zoning. The uh, property again is located off of North Pinellas Avenue. It's outlined in yellow here on your screen. It is located within the city's special area plan, which is all of the area shown in gray, and is uh, adjacent to the Ancoat River. The applicants are here today seeking conditional use approval to allow a commercial recreation use on the property. Uh, the property is just over half an acre in size. The current land use is CRD, Community Redevelopment District, and it's located within the T5D transect zone of the SMART code. Um, again, they're looking to get approval for a commercial recreation use, specifically guided kayak tours. Uh, commercial recreation is not a specific use identified in the SMART code. It is uh, similar to retail uses, uh, which are permitted within the T5D zone. However, staff, with an abundance of caution, uh, wanted to run this through the conditional use process to identify any potential issues. Uh, the applicant has provided in the application uh, backup materials, a detailed business proposal, as well as a detailed site improvements plan, um, but they are going to be offering guided kayak tours on the Ancloat River. Uh, they're initially looking to have three tours per day that will have a maximum of 10 people per, per tour. Uh, the kayaks are intended to be securely stored on site in, on wooden racks with no permanent structure installed on site. Um, the kayak launch will only be utilized for their customers participating in the guided tours and will not be available to the general public. Um, they are proposing very minimal site improvements, uh, just basic site cleanup, some additional landscaping, as well as installation of uh, wheel stops to have some more formalized parking on the existing hard surface. Uh, this is a look at the conceptual site plan. I've turned it here on the screen to make it larger, so north is pointing over to the left here. Um, access will be retained from Alt-19 or North Pinellas Avenue here. The kayak launch is proposed at the northern point of the property. The kayaks will be stored in this general area and they'll provide in parking again on the existing hard surface along the street frontage as well as the southern property line. They also provided some conceptual renderings of the site. Um, again, they're not proposing any sort of permanent structure on the property. They'll just be storing some of the um, kayaks on site as well as having some more formalized parking. Uh, again, this property is located in the city's special area plan. Uh, specifically, it's within the Sponge Docks uh, Character District. The primary intent of that uh, district is to be comprised of tourist-oriented commercial businesses, restaurants, and industrial waterfront uses. Uh, the character district is intended to continue to support the working waterfront as well as the tourist trade. Um, and the yellow area is the entire Sponge Docks character district. Uh, further south of the site, you have the North Pinellas Avenue district and the Uptown district. With respect to your review criteria for the conditional use, uh, the proposed use does not require any significant or permanent modifications. Uh, any future improvements would require uh, to meet the standards of the SMART Code as well as the Florida Building Code, if applicable. Uh, the pro property is located within the Sponge Docks Character District, which is primarily comprised of tourist-oriented commercial uses that support the working waterfront. The proposed use serves as both a local and tourist attraction, uh, therefore supporting the overall intent of that district. Uh, the use is consistent with the special area plan as well as the comprehensive plan. 
The property is not uh, located on an environmentally sensitive site. However, it is in the coastal high hazard area and it is adjacent to the Anclote River. However, again, there's no intended um, development on the property. Uh, the use is temporary in nature and not expected to have any adverse impacts. And the site is not located in the historic district. Uh, the site sits significantly lower than Alt-19, so there is a natural buffer from the road down to the property. Um, and it's also buffered to the north and east by the Anclote River. The proposed use is limited to guided kayak tours, and the kayak launch will not be available to the general public, and it's not expected to adversely impact the surrounding property values. Um, the proposed site uh, does not require any extension of uh, public services, and it does make use of a vacant property within the city limits without requiring any significant modifications. Uh, the use does enhance and carry out the intent of the special area plan, and the city does not expect to incur any costs with the proposed use. Uh, with that, staff does provide a preliminary staff recommendation of approval for Resolution 2022-16, uh, granting conditional use approval for the operation of a commercial recreation use in the T5D district. Uh, we do have three uh, conditions that are listed here on site, uh, the, or on the screen. Uh, the first is the kayak launch shall only be used for guided tours and not available for the general public. Jet skis and other motorized watercraft shall not be permitted, and all applicable state and county permits shall be obtained for access to the Anclote River. A public notice was provided and we have not received any written uh, responses at this time. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Members of the board have questions? I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, did the applicant, maybe it's a question of the applicant, how many kayaks are they looking at <coughs> uh, like for, for a tour or something like that or eco tour? <coughs> um, are you looking at 10 at a time, 20, 50? So I'll defer to how many kayaks they'd need, but they did indicate that um, right now they're looking to do three tours a day with up to 10 people per tour. So however ki many kayaks are needed All for right. 10 people. All right. Okay. I'll ask that. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Um, does the uh, applicant plan on using any public utilities like water, sewer? Um, I do not believe so, but I'll, I'll defer to the applicant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for staff? God, just bring it over here. Is that seeing none, uh, would the applicant like to make a presentation? If you would step up to the microphone and state your name and address. Um, and, and then you can answer questions. So my name is Austin Wood. Uh, my address is 3471 Pinehurst Drive uh, in Holiday. Um, to the utilities question, there's really nothing we need. Um, nothing's being added to the site, so there'll be no restrooms or anything like that added. Um, really the kayaks, eight to 12, depending on tandems and singles. Okay. Um, and really everything there kind of goes through kind of quite nicely what we are planning to do. There's no changes at all other than improving the aesthetic value of that area um, we'll be very aware of um, trash that kind of blows into that area it's kind of misused at the minute um, so just keeping that area looking nice and tidy will be really important to us yeah the, the only the only reason i asked the number of kayaks is because you're so close to navigable turning basin and stuff like that and and seeing dozens of kayaks in the water at one time could be could be impactful to to the commercial boat traffic um, but I, I you know I like the idea it's just I think it's something that I think could blend well in the city okay any other questions for the applicant seeing none uh, do we have any members of the public here to comment on this item State your name and address and, and your comment. Good evening, gentlemen. Peter Lackis, 514 Ashland Avenue. I'd like to point out a few things in the uh, backup here. Uh, in the executive summary, uh, it says, we'll provide intimate guided kayak tours on the Anklet River east of Alternate 19. That's an important point because predominance of the traffic on the river as far as for boats and kayaks they kind of separate there uh, the dog park launch is on the east side of that bridge also in fact i just went kayaking this saturday and uh, we launched from the dog park it's 
beautiful place to launch for. Uh, the nice thing about this, it says the tours will focus on the mangroves, the wildlife that surrounds them, and the importance of protecting them. And then on the sec third, well, that was on page three of the executive summary. On page four, talks about ecotourism. Americans spends $887 billion annually participating in outdoor recreation, supporting 7.6 million American jobs. That's from the Outdoor Industry Association. Uh, the point I'm making is for years I've been coming to board meetings, not necessarily yours, but to board meetings trying to explain the value of ecotourism. This is an admirable project. Also in there, to lower it says river wild kayaking will provide another reason to visit the area without building or altering the landscape. While providing the ecotourism guidelines, the company will help protect the environment and educate its guests on its importance. It will also add a small number of jobs to the area and help keep the river clean. Guides and guests are encouraged to collect trash during their tours. That was something I found. The water was clean. I saw stingrays, green herons, osprey. In fact, I think I saw an eagle, but he was too high up to turn. And I, ibises, all kinds of wildlife there. So this is a good thing to bring into the city. It augments our tourism, and hopefully it will help to expand uh, the ecotourism that we can offer. We already have a boat crew that goes out to help people look for dolphins. People come to Spring Bayou for the manatees. We got Anclote Lighthouse where people go out to. This is a resource that we fully need to take advantage of that helps not only our residents, but our tourist industry. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do we have any other members of the public wishing to comment? Seeing none, do we have any uh, people on, on Zoom or, or other, or email communications? No, we didn't have any email communications. All right. Uh, if there's no further public comments, we'll close public comments. Uh, does the applicant wish to rebut uh, the public comments in any way? No? Okay. Uh, let's bring it back to the board for communication then. Uh, can I have a motion and a second? I make a motion we accept application 22-40. I did want to just clarify with the conditions that are listed in the staff report <clears throat> or no. Yes, yes, yes. With the conditions in, in the report. Yes. Can you. we have a second? I'll second. Uh, uh, do we, if we have any board discussion before we have a roll call? Let's have a roll call. Mr. Andriotis? Yes. Mr. Zimbellis? Yes. Mr. Koulianos? Yes. Ms. Vigil? Yes. Mr. Vesey? Yes. Mr. Kuskudis? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Okay, that brings us to what was originally item eight on our agenda, application 2234. Uh, it's a future land use amendment, special area plan, character district map amendment, and a transect zone map amendment related to property located at 100 and 108 North Ring Avenue. Uh, could we have the staff report, please? Sure, Allie Keene, senior planner. Uh, the property is located just south of where we are tonight. It's at the corner of North Ring and uh, East Orange Avenue, outlined here in yellow on the screen. The applicants are here today requesting a future land use map amendment as well as a rezoning of this property. They are specifically requesting to incorporate this site into the city's special area plan uh, for the purpose of allowing potential mixed use or short-term lodging within the existing historic structure uh, located at 100 North Ring Avenue. Uh, the current land use is residential urban. The proposed land use is community redevelopment district. The current zoning is conditional residential mix and the proposed uh, zoning is special area plan. Uh, because they are looking to get incorporated into the city's special area plan, they also need to have designations for this character district as well as the transect zones. They are proposing a um, downtown character district and the T4A transect zone. And I'll break this down for you a little bit uh, clearer as I go on. Uh, looking at the current site conditions, there are two existing structures on site, both of which are contributing historic structures. 
The structure on the northern portion of the site here is the um, existing single family home. It was moved to this location back in 2015 when the townhomes across the street were constructed. Uh, the structure on the southern portion of the home is an existing vacant two story structure. It was formerly a livery stable. Um, it is also again contributing historic. Um, it was identified as the livery stable on both the 1909 and the 1913 Sanborn maps. Uh, later in 1926, this structure was used as a, a site of a hotel, the Scotia Hotel, and later it had been used um, for apartments and I believe even as single family residential. Um, again, this is currently vacant at this time and the applicants are not proposing any sort of modifications to the structures or um, changing anything on the exterior. If there were to be any modifications in the future, they are in the historic district, they would require historic preservation board approval and review. Um, when looking at the land use, again, this existing uh, current land use is residential urban, which is the yellow shown here on the screen. To the south of the site, there's residential office general, which is a mixed use district. And then um, across the dotted black line, this is the special area plan boundary currently, is the CRD land use. The special area plan uh, encompasses this area, of the community redevelopment area, as well as the sponge docks. It was adopted back in 2011. Uh, it's in the purpose is to encourage a mix of uses, diverse housing and lodging options, while focusing on the redevelopment and infill opportunities that are sensitive to the historic importance and character of the area. The special area plan further breaks down the boundary into 10 different character districts, which is the map you see here on the screen. The applicants are looking to go into the downtown character district, which is adjacent to the site. I've outlined it here in red on the screen. The property is approximately here where the red star is located. And the intent of this district is to promote retail development and encourage medium density and mixed use residential development to support the retail along Tarpon Avenue. Um, when looking at density, the current RU, or residential urban designation, allows a maximum of seven and a half dwelling units per acre. The proposed downtown character district would allow up to 15 dwelling units per acre. When looking at the site, it's approximately 0.32 acres in size. It would currently be allowed to have a maximum of two units. Uh, if it is changed the downtown character designation, it would be allowed a maximum of five units. Um, and just as a reminder, there is an existing single family house on the site. That is one of the units, so only four additional sites or units could be added to the property. This is just zooming into that character district map in relationship to the site. Again, the downtown district is the area in yellow, and that is what they're proposing to go into. Uh, now shifting to zoning, this is your current zoning map. Um, currently, the property is in the CRM, or the Conditional Residential Mix District. The residential office district is to the south of the site, and there is R70A, which is a single families district to the east of the site. And the area in um, gray is the current boundary of the special area plan. The SMART code serves as a special area plan's regulating document, so it provides the specific development standards and permitted uses for each of the transect zones. Um, the, special, or the SMART code promotes a vibrant pedestrian environment as well as mixed use development. And this particular code further breaks down the character districts into various transect zones. So as you can see in the downtown character district, which is this red boundary, there are several different transect zones. So these are more specific guidelines within given areas of a character district. Um, again, they're proposing to go in the T4A, which is this darker orange color transect zone. And this is just zooming into that map in relationship to the site. Um, I'm not going to go through this line by line, but this is just an overview of the zoning summary between the current zoning of CRM and the proposed transect zone of T4A. Uh, the primary difference are really the, the setbacks. The current zoning really establishes minimum setbacks, whereas the transect zones establish maximum setbacks. Um, so there is quite a difference in that regulation. However, it's important to note that these are both historic structures and how they are currently built comply with the proposed transect zone, and they are currently non-conforming with its current zoning of CRM. The applicant has indicated they haven't had a final um, say on what they're exactly going to do within the property, but short-term lodging um, was a potential use. Um, short-term lodging is defined as uh, rental units that are rented for periods of six weeks or less. Um, within the T4A transit zone, it does require conditional use approval of short-term lodging. So if they were to do that, they would have to come back to the board for a formal application and review process specific to that use. Um, so it wouldn't be outright permitted if the zoning and land use are amended tonight. 
and that is a public hearing process. Um, this is listing your land use amendment and rezoning criteria. And with that, staff does provide a preliminary recommendation of approval for both ordinances 2022-12, amending the future land use map, and ordinance 2022-11, amending the zoning atlas. Um, the city special area plan does recognize the adaptive reuse of historic structures, um, as well as the unique challenges developing with downtown. Uh, the proposed land use and zoning change does allow for the former livery structure to be fully utilized with the potential for mixed use, which does support the overall intent of that special area plan. And with that, I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, do members of the board have questions for staff? I, I have one question. Mm -hmm. Parking. Yes. Parking. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think I'm familiar with the property, but I don't know if there is there sufficient access or ability to have vehicles parked on, on property or they have to have street parking? So typically with properties that are already developed, um, a lot of times whatever's existing for parking can accommodate whatever use goes into the property. With that said, if there are any sort of residential units put into the property, typically parking <coughs> is required. Um, there is space, if I go back to the, go back to the, there, oops, right here. Um, there is some space in the back of the property, and these two units are being viewed as one site to provide some additional on-site parking. Um, specific to potentially short-term rental parking, again, because that's a conditional use, parking is something that can be considered during that process as well. Chairman? Yes. I, I need a legal opinion. Uh, I own the property uh, catty corner to that property. So I believe I'm an affected party. Uh, so you could be an affected party, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have a conflict of interest for this particular application. If this were to pass, do you have any type of uh, pecuniary benefit from that? Do, would you have a boon financially? I don't believe so. Okay. Then as far as I'm concerned, unless you find that there's some other type of conflict that you have with, with granting the application or you find that you cannot be impartial, or you have strong feelings about this application one way or the other, then I would not presume that there's a conflict of interest. Do you have any strong feelings about this property one way or the other? I don't. Or do you, does the outcome of this application have any bearing on your finances or on your particular property at all? I don't believe so. Okay. Then I don't find that there's necessarily a conflict of interest that would require you to abstain from the vote. Thank you. Well, that's good to know because I own the property next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Then I'm going to ask you the same question. Uh, same answer. Same answer. Okay, same answer. You don't have any type of pecuniary gain from the, the outcome of this application? None. And no strong feelings either way? Neither way. Okay. Uh, question for staff. There, this has nothing to do at this point about adding buildings or changing the use of buildings or, or any of that, right? This is just changing the... Uh, Correct. The area that it's in. Yeah. Correct. Any other questions for staff? All right. Seeing, seeing no uh, further questions for staff, would the applicant like to make a presentation or a comment? You mean Will Kokenauer, owner's representative of uh, Livery Stable LLC. Uh, appreciate Allie doing a great presentation, kind of summarizing the uh, plan for the property. As she mentioned, there's a uh, 108 North Ring. A little history on that. That was across the street, uh, kind of where the townhomes are shown now. About six, seven years ago, part of the uh, development process, we had to relocate that uh, structure across the street be able to build the townhome, so that was moved across the street and uh, refurbished at that time. Uh, currently is an annual rental single family, and the parcels were combined to allow for the uh, potential parking, as you mentioned. Uh, and there's also an, uh, I believe, city alley behind the back uh, to provide access into the back parking uh, with some configurations for that. Uh, currently, the building has been gutted uh, as far as the two-story livery stable allow for flexibility on, uh, depending on this land use change uh, and so forth. Uh, it's quite a process. The uh, family that previously had, they were there probably about 30 years and they did have it as a uh, bed and breakfast and then family quarters, multiple levels and multiple rooms and so forth. 
Does anyone have any specific questions that I might be able to answer? Do members of the board have questions for the applicant? So, so what is your intended use of the, what do you, what do you plan to put in there? Right now, uh, I guess depending on how this application goes, you know, basically my understanding as zone now, it's just a single, could be a single family home. Uh, so the goal would be to um, provide, you know, additional units up to the four units that could be accommodated. Okay. Or possibly mixed use, uh, some kind of commercial on the first floor, residential, maybe short term on the second floor, just depending on the architectural layout and uh, the tenant, mi tenant mix. Further questions for the applicant? Seeing none, we can move to public comment. Is, is there anyone present who uh, feels that they are an affected party? Seeing none, we can open for general public comment. Uh, if uh, anyone who wishes to comment will come to the microphone and state your name and address and make your comments, please. Good evening, board members. Anita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive. I grew up on the corner of Gross and Orange. For years and years, it was a private home. That's where Phil Demas's family lived for many, many years. And it is also known throughout Tarpon history as the uh, stable house. And it, I hope y'all pass it because it's cleaning up the area. It's beautifying. And then right across the street, you have offices there. And people park in front of Mr. Colianis's office and across the street, there's no problem. You've got the bank on the other corner from it. And it'll beautify the area and clean up Ring Avenue as you come down to City Hall. And we've got the, motel, uh, the townhouses across the street and it's going to be an asset to the community as the city works hard to clean up Ring Avenue. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments on this item? Okay, seeing, seeing none, we'll pl close public comments. Uh, and uh, does, well, does the applicant wish to make any rebuttal comments to the public comments? I'm all right. You're good? Okay. Uh, so we'll bring it back to the board for consideration. Uh, I need a motion and a second, please. Make a motion to approve application 22-34. Second. Can you keep in mind there two resolutions with this application. Um, and so I would just ask that the motion be for each individual resolution. So if you wouldn't mind amending your motion to be specific to the resolution as opposed to the application as a whole. Okay, so we'd be begin by addressing- I'm sorry, not resolutions, they're ordinances. So the first one would be future ordinance 2022-12, which is the future land use map amendment. Okay, so we'll start with a motion related well, Just we have a motion and a second on the floor, so okay. whoever made the first amendment, if they or first motion, if they wouldn't mind amending it to reflect. So motion to approve 2022-12. Okay. Second. Thank you. Can we have a roll call, please? Well, is there any discussion on it? Oh, yes, discussion. Okay. Any board discussion? Can we have a roll call? <laughs> Mr. Andriotis? Yes. Mr. Zimbellis? Yes. Mr. Koulianos? Yes. Ms. Vigil? Yes. Mr. Vesey? Yes. Mr. Kuskoudis? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. All right, that brings us to a motion for the special area plan character district map amendment. What what number is that one? I don't have Ordinance 2022-11. That's 11, yeah. The zoning map yeah. amendment. Do I have a motion, please? Chair, I motion that we pass it as applied ordinance 2022-11. I'll second. Can we have a roll call? Mr. Andriotis? Yes. Mr. Zimbellis? Yes. Mr. Koulianos? Yes. Ms. Vigil? Yes. Mr. Vesey? Yes. Mr. Kuskoudis? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. 
All right, now do, do we have a separate vote on the transect zone map amendment then also? No, that's included with the last ordinance. That's included, okay. All right, so that brings us to the item that was originally item number seven, application 22-37, conditional use approval to allow for a hotel in the T4C transect zone on property at the east side of Roosevelt Boulevard between Cross Street and Dodecanese, including a portion of Hill Street. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, before the city's presentation, uh, I'm just wondering if we should have a discussion as to time limitations on, on um, public comment. Good uh, point. With, I mean, I, with the number of people here. I would suggest we go to the standard four minutes that we've, we've used historically. Yeah. Are you just limiting public comment or would you also be limiting presentations by the applicant and staff? It's up to the board. Your rules of procedure allow for it, but it's yeah, completely I, discretionary. I, more time. I think, I think yeah. presentations uh, uh, justify more time. Yeah. Okay. And just, okay. And so you would just like to limit only the public comment portion of the evening to four minutes and that is the will of the, the whole board? Do you need it in the form of a motion? Nope. Right. Mm -mm. Just looking to see if Everybody everyone's in consensus that? or a majority. I'm good with that. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, can we have the staff presentation, please? Then? Yes. Allie Keen, one more time. All right. Uh, the center property is located here, outlined in red, uh, off of Roosevelt Boulevard. It's just south of Dodecanese Boulevard. Uh, a portion of the site does include Hill Street. Um, this is an excerpt from the Smart Codes uh, transect map, and you can see that this property is split between two different transect zones, the T5C zone to the north and the T4A zone to the south. The applicants are here today requesting conditional use approval to allow for a hotel in the T4A transect zone. Uh, this property is just under two acres in size. The current land use is CRD, Community Redevelopment District, and it's in the Sponge Docks Character District. Um, the current zoning is T5C and T4A transect zones. Um, and the T5, or hotels are a permitted use within the T5C transect zone. However, they are conditional use within the T4A zone, which is why the applicants are here today asking conditional use approval. Uh, the hotel is proposed to have a total of 99 rooms. They are suite style, so they have small kitchenettes and they're designed for families. Um, it's going to be five stories with four habitable stories above one story of parking. Um, they have included some amenities for the guests, including an outdoor pool, a fitness room, guest laundry room, and they're also, pro also proposing balconies facing Roosevelt uh, frontage. Uh, the applicant also has indicated they don't have any sort of public bar or restaurant um, with this proposal. Uh, this is looking at the conceptual site plan provided by the applicant. Again, it's turned here to be larger on your screen. North is pointing over here to the left. Uh, the proposed hotel is oriented along Roosevelt Boulevard. Uh, that is its primary frontage. Um, they are proposing to have access from Roosevelt Boulevard, from Hill Street, and also from Cross Street to the south. Um, they are proposing to have a decorative street wall that I'll talk a little bit more in detail here in a minute. Um, along the frontage to provide screening of both the parking lot as well as to fulfill a building frontage requirement. And the pool is proposed at the rear of the building uh, back here in the dotted blue area. They also provided some conceptual renderings at the hotel, so I'll just uh, show these to you. These, this is the Roosevelt Boulevard frontage showing the primary access um, for pedestrians here to Roosevelt um, Boulevard. This is another view along Roosevelt Boulevard. And here's one more. This is a view of the back of the building with, of the pool. And this is a, an aerial uh, image just showing the proposed layout of the hotel in relationship to the building massing of existing structures within the area. Uh, when reviewing conditional uses, the board is to consider seven criteria established in the Land Development Code. Those are um, outlined here on the screen. Uh, staff has or organized the staff report as well as this presentation into different um, areas of consideration uh, to help you make your decision and your recommendation to the Board of Commissioners tonight. Uh, the first area is the special area plan considerations. Um, again, this was adopted back in 2011. Um, it does recognize the unique history, culture, and development pattern of this area. Um, specifically, this property is in the Sponge Docks Character District. The entire district is outlined here in the dotted black line, the site here in red. 
Uh, the intent of the Sponge Docks Character District is again to continue the support of working waterfront and tourist trade. Um, the special area plan does have a series of different goals and objectives. One specific object objective within this district is to provide tourist accommodations within walking distance to tourist destinations in the sponge docks. Uh, hotel development is further incentivized within the special area plan, specifically within the sponge docks character district, to allow for increased height between four and six stories. Uh, to allow an increased floor area ratio, or FAR, of 2.0, as well as to allow for up to 60 lodging units per acre. Uh, next area are considerations to height, and I have a few slides um, on this topic. Um, again, they are proposing to have the hotel be a total of five stories, with four habitable stories, one story of parking on the ground level. Um, the total height measured uh, to the top of roof deck is 54 feet, which is about here. Uh, to the top of the parapet is 58 feet. Um, the special area plan, as well as the smart code, does establish minimum and maximum story heights. Um, if the applicant were to max out the total allowance for height, uh, a five-story building could be up to 81 feet in height. Uh, prior to the smart code and special area plan being established, this property was located within the WD1 uh, zoning district. Um, that district permitted hotels by right and it allowed them to have a maximum height of 50 feet. Um, another consideration is the Highway Business District, um, which is primarily um, oriented along the US-19 corridor. Back in 2019, that zoning district was amended to specifically allow hotels to have a maximum height of 70 feet. Um, on the site, there is a significant ground elevation change from Hope Street down to Roosevelt Boulevard. This image is showing one foot contour lines on the property with the red areas being the highest elevation and the yellow being the lowest. Um, there's approximately about a seven to seven and a half foot elevation change from the um, east to the west portion of the site. From the top of Roosevelt down to the bottom of the site, there's approximately a 13 to 14 foot elevation change. Um, this is just an image standing on Roosevelt Boulevard looking towards the site. I'm just trying to show you the, that gradual slope um, from the subject property up to the Hope Street. And this is a drone image looking um, south along Roosevelt Boulevard, uh, subject property here. Again, just trying to show you some of the elevation and topography changes on this property. Um, when looking at the surrounding area, there are several different types of building types, structures, uses um, that you will see. Um, some to consider are the Turtle Cove Marina, which is high and dry boat storage. Um, those are approximately four stories in height. The former Greek Hall, which is now used for a retail establishment, is located here. Um, from the subject property to the top of this building is approximately 35 feet. Um, there are some newer three-story townhomes over in the distance. This is a little further south along um, Hope Street. And this is just looking uh, north towards uh, Dodecanese and the sponge docks for your consideration. Uh, lastly, staff did want to provide you some comparisons with existing development throughout the city, both uh, relatively close to the site as well as elsewhere. Um, again, the Turtle Cove Marina, uh, just southwest of the site, is approximately 45 to 50 feet, or about four stories. The former Greek Hall, measured from the subject property, is approximately 35 feet in height. And the tallest building within the city is Tarpon Tower off of Martin Luther King Boulevard, and that is approximately 70 feet in height. Um, if the conditional use is approved for the hotel, the next step is to submit for site plan review and approval. Um, and during that, the regulations and development standards of the SMART code will be reviewed for full compliance. Um, during the review of this conditional use, uh, staff did do a preliminary look to identify any sort of concerns or inconsistencies between the proposed and the SMART code. Um, I'll just highlight a couple of the items that we talked about. One is um, really the intent of the development standards within the SMART code is to promote vibrant, walkable pedestrian environments. To do that, it pushes buildings closer to the street, has smaller setbacks, uh, screens parking areas um, from the adjacent right-of-ways, and provides direct pedestrian connections to the streets. Um, the applicant did respond to some of those considerations by pushing the building closer to the street. However, they did still want to have um, a slight setback because it is a taller structure. Um, so therefore, they have proposed this decorative street wall that not only fulfills the building frontage requirement, uh, but it also does screen the parking lot. Um, they are proposing to do some integrated seating for pedestrians as well as landscaping with that wall. 
um, and potentially utilize it for, to fulfill the public art requirement. Um, the other consideration is, again, they are uh, proposing balconies along the rooms that face Roosevelt Boulevard. Um, that does further address the street frontage by connecting both the public and private <coughs> spaces together. And then again, they do have a direct pedestrian access from Roosevelt Boulevard. Um, the other consideration of the smart code is it does, for structured parking, require it to be located in something that's called the third layer. That essentially is 20 feet back from the front wall of the building. It's a little hard to see, but this yellow line indicates that 20-foot mark. Um, to address this concern, the applicant has pulled some of the um, hotel amenities, like the fitness room and um, laundry room, down to the first story as well as a, an entrance area, and pushing the parking spaces back behind that third layer line. The presence of the street wall as well as some landscaping they're proposing will provide additional screening and uh, fulfill that overall intent. Uh, when looking at the comprehensive plan, again, this property is located in the CRD uh, land use category. The CRD land use category specifically refers to the special area plan for general use allowances and density and intensity requirements. Uh, the special area plan essentially serves as a mini comprehensive plan specifically for this area. Um, when reviewing this application, we did look at the other um, elements of the comprehensive plan, and we did find a few goals, objectives, and policies that are relevant to the application, which I have listed here on the screen. Um, these were all within the future land use element. The first is goal one, uh, to protect the cultural heritage, historic resources, tourist economy, and environmental setting of Tarpon Springs. Objective 1.2, encourage redevelopment and renewal of the city's designated CRA and promote the Sponge Docks tourist area. Policy 3.4.2, prohibit development proposals which promote the proliferation of urban sprawl. Urban sprawl shall be contained through the use of infill development of vacant properties, compact growth contiguous to the existing developed area, and the provision of public services and facilities. Uh, goal seven is to promote development of temporary lodging facilities within the city to serve the growing tourist industry within the city of Tarpon Springs. Uh, this area is also located within the nationally recognized Greektown Historic Area. This map is showing you the boundary of that area. Um, this is something that recognizes the cultural history of the area, but does not establish any sort of specific design or regulatory regulations. Um, this area is really comprised of a variety of building types and uses. Um, there is residential, there's commercial, as well as marine-related industrial uses within the Greektown area. Uh, the applicant did propose that their um, hotel color palette was chosen to complement the Greek heritage of the area, as well as the sponge exchange at the docks. When looking at the environmental considerations, this property is not located on an environmentally sensitive site. However, it is located within the AE flood zone. Um, that does require them to meet all applicable FEMA construction standards for elevation and flood proofing. Um, the property is also located within the Coastal High Hazard Area, which is the map shown here on the screen. Uh, typically within the Coastal High Hazard Area, residential development, which is what is permitted in the T4A district, is discouraged and not ideal for development. So the proposed use is more compatible with the Coastal High Hazard Area. Um, zooming out and looking at the context and compatibility of the neighborhood, um, again, this is within walking distance to the sponge docks. Um, it is primarily surrounded by surface parking lots that I have outlined here on the screen in black um, to the north and to the west. Um, Turtle Cove Marina, again, is to the southwest of the site. The former Greek Hall is located here adjacent to the southeast. There are three single-family residences um, located adjacent to the site to the east. The uh, middle one here that I have highlighted in yellow is homesteaded. Uh, this southern one is an approved short-term rental. Uh, zooming out further, again, it's walkable to the sponge docks, but it's also within close proximity to the downtown. It's less than a mile from there. Um, it also is in close proximity to the Pinellas Trail. Uh, the applicants did provide some preliminary traffic assessments for the proposed use, um, which are outlined here on the screen, but essentially they're anticipating a daily trip rate of 453 trips, 
an AM, our morning peak hour of 35 trips, and a PM peak hour of 37 trips. Uh, one thing that's important to note is the close proximity to the proposed hotel to the tourist destinations will likely reduce the number of vehicle trips. Um, another consideration is the Jolly Trolley uh, serves this area as well as um, downtown. There are stops both downtown and in the sponge docks within walking distance of the proposed hotel, so that also can serve as an alternative mode of transportation for hotel guests and visitors. The proposed um, project does show a portion of Hill Street um, being vacated. Um, Right-of-way vacations require a separate application as well as review process. Um, but during the review of this conditional use, we did have preliminary discussions with our technical review committee about any sort of potential conflicts with the vacation of Hill Street. Um, the area that's proposed to be vacated is just adjacent to the property, and it's this large area hatched in red. Um, at the TRC discussion, um, the applicant was made aware that they would be responsible for any relocation of existing utilities within that right-of-way. Um, there is an existing sewer line that currently serves, or appears to serve this property as well as an adjacent lot that's vacant um, right here northeast of the site. Um, the developer has indicated that they do believe they have the ability to relocate that sewer line um, through their parking lot and still provide access um, for the adjacent property if it were to develop in the future. Um, another consideration is Hill Street is a one-way street going south, um, but there is some on-street parking that's available. Um, with the vacation of that street, you would lose about six to seven parking spaces on street. Um, the applicant did also indicate that there are some 10-foot unimproved alleyways um, along the eastern portion of the site, as well as cuts through the southern portion um, that are intended to be vacated at that same time when they um, submit the application for Hill Street. Um, lastly, just touching on economic development, Karen Lemons from our economic development manager provided us some um, information about the impact of a hotel at this location. Um, specifically, back in 2016, there was an economic impact study uh, performed. It indicated that the city attracts 1.1 million uh, visitors annually, and of that, 86% are only day visitors. Um, so that's 944,000 of that 1.1 million are just day trips. Um, it is indicated that a new hotel in the tourist area will increase overnight visitor stay and have direct impacts on the area shops, restaurants, and tourist attractions. Um, now making full circle back to your conditional use criteria. Um, again, upon approval of the conditional use, the applicant will be required to submit for full site plan review and approval. Uh, during the preliminary review, we did identify any potential conflicts that the applicant has um, addressed. Uh, number two, the proposed use is appropriate to the property in question and compatible with the area. The site is within a mixed-use area consisting of retail establishments, restaurants, marine-related industrial uses, as well as in residential uses. Um, the area is also within the special area plan, specifically sponge docks, uh, which encourages the development of lodging facilities to accommodate tourists visiting this area. Uh, the use is consistent with both the city's comprehensive plan as well as the special area plan, as outlined in the uh, staff report. And the site is not proposed on an environmentally sensitive site, uh, and the site is located within the nationally recognized Greek Town Historic Area. The site, again, is generally surrounded by commercial uses and parking. Um, there are the three single-family residences to the east of the site, one of which is homesteaded. Um, although the site is mostly surrounded by non-residential uses, um, the homesteaded property could have some impacts with the development of a hotel, um, but that property is also located within the special area plan. Uh, number six, the use um, will not adversely impact nor exceed the city's capacity to serve pu with public facilities. Um, there are existing facilities within the area to serve the property, and there is capacity. Um, the applicant did provide preliminary consumption rates. However, an in-depth review will be conducted during the site plan review process to ensure that the site is adequately served. Um, any sort of requirements to upgrade or extend the utility services will be the responsibility of the applicant. And lastly, the proposed project um, does represent infill development of a vacant parcel within the developed um, area of the city. Um, staff does recognize that this is a really important project and has potentially a significant impact to the city as well as the sponge docks. Um, typically, we would provide you with a formal recommendation. In lieu of that, we chose to, again, provide you with uh, various consideration um, areas to help you make your decision and your recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. Um, if the board does elect to recommend approval, we do have three recommended conditions. 
Um, the first is to provide an evacuation plan in the event of a hurricane uh, shall be provided at the time of site plan uh, approval. The second is approval of this conditional use shall be contingent on the partial vacation of Hill Street, which requires, again, a separate application and review process. And the third is a site plan must be approved within one year of the conditional use approval. And really the last thing, <laughs> um, the applicant did provide uh, to the board, and we provided those to you on Friday, some um, additional materials to review. Um, they were just more detailed site plans. They did not change the overall layout, height, um, proposed number of re rooms, or anything significant on the property, just provided more detail. So we do have um, those slides um, in the backup materials. If anyone has any questions, we can pull those up. And I just wanted to get that into the record. All right, with that, I'd be happy to answer questions. Mr. Okay. Chairman. I've, I've got a couple real quick. All right, the, the, sure, uh, the Chair. I'd, I'd like to, to get clarified from staff and our attorney a little bit. Our decision tonight is just on the conditional use, which is basically just a decision of whether it's okay to allow any hotel to be developed on the portion of the property that's in the T4A transect zone and we are not or by taking action to approve or or disprove this we're not approving or disproving any of the plans we've seen tonight correct it's just the concept of whether a hotel in the T4A transect on that particular site is appropriate that's correct um, but with that said they did provide some preliminary materials or their backup materials. So theoretically, the conditional use would have to be fairly consistent with what's been proposed here, but there can be some slight modifications to address anything that may come up in the site plan process. But yes, you're just approving the use of a hotel in a T4A transect zone. And so even the discu discussion like I, I saw in the special area plan indicated four to six stories was acceptable. Uh, but at this point, we're really just talking about a hotel use. We're not really even talking about the details, is that correct? So the, the special area plan provides the height allowances, the maximums. Um, so it is part of the consideration of the conditional use. It is, hotels are permitted within special area plan to be four to six floors in height, but that could go to part of your um, evaluation of the conditional use criteria, such as compatibility but, and things of that nature. I mean, do, are we in a position and, and this may, may be for our attorney, to comment on height then? Uh, well, uh, yes, because as Ali has said, that is one of the things that lead you to your, your conditional use criteria. So it is, while you are allowed to have a four to six story building within that area, you have the criteria for the special area plan for the conditional use that you are to consider, um, and that can be one of the contributing factors. Okay. And the, the approval process uh, I mean, assuming that this would pass tonight, th what does the approval process look like for the project from there? We, we see it again for site plan review and, and further comment. Yes, so um, once the board makes a recommenda recommendation tonight on the conditional use, that goes to the Board of Commissioners um, for one reading um, for the resolution. Um, if it is approved by the Board of Commissioners, then the applicant will be required to submit site plan application. Um, that will then come back to you for, for review as well, and that will be the detailed site plans, um, and that will be looking at the compliance with the smart code requ requirements. And then that, and that, that goes to the Board of Commissioners as well. And that would be the final approval then? Correct, they, and then followed by building, building permits. permits, yes. Okay, thank you. Would other oh, and like yes, to? and um, along with the site plan approval, they will also have to submit that application for the right-of-way vacation for Hill Street. True, mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate my, those comments. You know, one of my concerns is I don't want to go down the path, uh, you know, to approve something and have everybody here. And, and, you know, I, I recognize the need for a hotel, but I don't want to go down the path just to have the applicant come back and then we start carving up or having issues with regard to the, the resubmittal or, or so. I'd like to have the opportunity to address those concerns now, whether or not they're applicable for today's uh, um, meeting or not. I think, it, I think they need, the applicant needs to necessarily hear what the concerns, at least my concerns, and I don't know about anybody else on, the, on this board, is because I'd like to see something move forward with regard to a potential 
hotel, but I don't, I don't want to be going back and forth, and if we could start working towards uh, an opportunity for approval, I think now's the appropriate time to address some of those concerns that I have. Well, I mean, my question wasn't to avoid asking about those things, but it was making sure that it was appropriate for us to, to address some of those things at, at this time. And, and I will say for purposes of the record, you have one application before you that is for conditional uses with specific I, criteria. So I would just say for purposes of the record and as your advisor, your legal advisor, to maintain your questions to those things that have to do with the criteria in the application oh, before you. I, I appreciate that, but you know me, I'm gonna ask the questions I'm gonna ask anyways, but I appreciate uh, um, So um, the questions that I have and, and let me circle back around after everybody's had a chance to speak, but under, under the uh, T5C, it's, it's a use by right, would that be correct? correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in that use by right, are the height, so the height, is that a given under the use by right, or is that something that uh, uh, we as a board have the opportunity to, to put as a condition, maybe to not whether or not today, but at a future date? So within that transect zone, it is a use by right. Um, the four to six stories is an allowance. So it tells you a hotel could be four to six stories. I think where height can potentially come into consideration is because of the T4A conditional use process, that's where you can have some questions about it. Um, I don't think it necessarily can finally, you know, finally divide half and half on the property, but because you're here for conditional use, um, it can be a consideration. Okay. And the entire, well, not the entire Dota Cadiz, but on the south side of Dota Cadiz, that also is considered a T5C, correct? Yes. Let me just go up to the map here. I believe it is, but I'll let you find it. Yeah. There. there we go. Um, so, yes, all of this kind of pink color here is T5C. Oh. So I'm going to refer. And then this is T4A, okay, the Okay, so I'm going to refer to the T5C as far as along Dota Canis, for example, and I'll use the term Bolero's parking lot because that's the way I grew up referring it to. Um, so if if somebody who currently owns the the Bolero's parking lot also wanted to do something similar, that's that's also permitted by right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so theoretically, whether there's the demand or not, we could have two sort of high-rise motel or that similar use along uh, the, the sponge dock area. Correct. Okay. Um, with regard to the sponge dock historical district, is there currently a, a Greek town or a Greek town historic preservation board? There is not. Okay. No. So there's, there's no, uh, anything in place that that sort of would have any input or any design implement, uh, requirements in that? Right, there are no established design okay. regulations. Okay, in, in your opinion, do you believe the current design is consistent with the uh, uh, Greektown Historic District? So with our analysis, staff looked at Greektown and what was consistent, what was currently there. Um, as we noted, and I'll go to this slide. Does that design, let me ask you this way, does that design protect the cultural heritage of the uh, Sponge Duck area? So what I, would, what I would say is based off our analysis is we looked at the Greektown area um, within this boundary and saw there are a variety of building types. Okay. So there's all different types of architectural styles, designs, as well as uses. And what would so, you call that arch architectural style? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just gonna come back and say, I just think that's an unfair question. I mean, there, there's, no, there's no established architectural style that's in a, in a design regulations manual anywhere. You have a whole list of architectural types that are in the district. None of them are four story, none of them are six story. So I, I it's, it's a that. hard thing to answer, I'm I sorry. understand that, but, but, but Renee, we're given, a, we're given an elevation. Okay. Yes. We're given an elevation of a square, a box. Yeah. In this, basically it's a box. And so I know the city is trying to develop 
the Greek Town Historical Preservation Area with some something that has teeth lit for, for a future. I, I don't know if it's, it's, it's on its way, whether it's six months, a year, or whatever the case may be. So I, I go back to the question, you know, because once, you know, this is a genie you can't put, put, put back in the bottle, okay? So I want to make sure that we, as a zoning board, get it right the first time and not have something five years from now, 10 years, or come and bat, bite us in the rear end. So I want to make sure that whatever we do uh, honors the Greek town or the sponge dock area that's consistent with the theme of the sponge docks. And that's why I prefaced my questions earlier on, I know why we're here today, but these are points that for the developer to understand, at least where I'm coming from, things that I'm going to look at in the few, when they bring this thing again, I don't want them to waste their time to, to present a box that, that quite frankly, just because you paint it Greek blue and white doesn't make it Greek. Um, and, and so, you know, and, I, and, and so those are the, the concerns that I have. And that's why when I look at that elevation, it does nothing for me. Understand. Okay. Let, let me let me you know lose a little history for everybody. So, when the special area plan was adopted and and the transit zones and everything were put in place in 2011, that that was over a course of a about a two year engagement effort. Um, there now there are there are massing you know and like setback you know details in that plan. It does not have um, design guidelines per se in 2014 is when the the registration nomination was submitted for the greek town cultural district and i apologize and i do want to get it in, entered into the record we did not give you guys a copy of that that narrative that really the only the what we have is just what was submitted to the national park service for uh, their consideration, and it was, you know, adopted as a uh, the Greek Town Historic District Cultural District. I'm sure people, folks will, uh, will speak to that tonight more eloquently, eloquently than I can. And at that point in time, it was specifically done so in a manner without, you know, the, the, at that point in time, as far as my understanding with the city was concerned, and I think I was gone by then, is that there was no intent to adopt follow-on design guidelines. Now, there, I know there is interest among some people to do that, but that is not scheduled for, I mean, there's, there's discussion, it's not, you know, there, but that's, that's kind of what it is now. But it did, it did come after, that, that, that district came after the Sponge Docks character, uh, the, the, the downtown, excuse me, the, the uh, smart code and the, and the character districts and everything were adopted. So. It is absolutely a piece of your criteria that should be, you know, it, it speaks to the compatibility issue. Um, it does, you know, it does talk to the history of the area and how it got where it is. So, you, you know, when you're looking at, you know, the, one of your criteria is, is, the, is the proposed use compatible with existing and planned uses in the area. And so I think that existing uses and the history of that comes out of that that cultural district designation so if that gives you any any guidance you know, you know clearly there's nothing like that in that district in that district right up in that nomination does that help yeah i mean I, and i'm looking at at you know the, the city's report and and it says you know this area recognizes the cultural history of the area and then it goes on to say but does not establish specific design specifications I understand that. Um, you know, the concern that I have, and this is sort of directed to the applicant, sure. is, you know, for my purposes, you know, and I understand and I and appreciate the need for a hotel. I represent a lot of small businesses in the Sponge Dock, dock area. Some of them may be mad at me for my, my, you know, creating a roadblock. But at the end of the day, I've got to do what's right for the historical uh, process down at down at that area and we can't again we can't put the GD back in the bottle I understand. so design elements are critical critical for me 
in, in, in this process and moving forward. So as far as the developer is concerned, that's a message. That's a message that, that you know, any approval, you know, I understand the need for a hotel, I support it, but, and there's a big but, I think it's gotta be consistent, the design's gotta be consistent with the cultural history of the area, period. And, and you know, um, I have concerns about the height, but that's, uh, 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 you know, for a, a different discussion, and at this point, I may circle back, but I said, I've got on my soapbox instead of what I've had to say. <laughs> Other questions for yes. staff? Go yeah, I have a couple of questions for Renee, please. So at, as I understand it, um, we're deciding on the conceptual plan, right? You have a conditional use. Conditional use. That does include concept plans. Okay. Um, and to address Mike's concerns, can they be discussed and decided upon after the, this vote, if we all were to vote yes, to discuss elevation, height conditions, or has that got to be discussed tonight as part of the vote that we make? Grenada, just to, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the conditional use, in, in my opinion, unless the attorney corrects me, you know, is you know, the applicant has submitted what they intend to build. They've just submitted a, the conceptual of what they intend to build. The only, so unless this board, you know, if, if you specifically, let's say you wanted to recommend approval, but you don't like the design, you know, you could make a recommendation that includes, you know, a additional conditions as long as there's a rational nexus of those conditions and you get that, you know, make that rational nexus as to why you're requesting specific things. You can provide that direction, you know, both to the part developer our, as, part, as of, part of our vote. As part of your vote and, and guidance for the Board of Commissioners to consider. And that doesn't stop their process. No, it won't stop their process. They, you know, unless they just decide that they can't do what they're being asked to do. That's their that, that's their that's their decision to make. So, but we're, it, but it doesn't stop their process. No. But we're agreeing on elevation tonight, right? No. You're you have an elevation, but if if your specific recommendation is that you don't like that elevation and you want something different with some, and you can provide some specifics as to what that be and to provide guide, guidance for the developer, you know, ultimately he has to make a, a decision, and I'll let him speak to this when he gets to his chance, to, as to whether or not he's gonna move forward with the project and come back and do a full site plan review. So, you know, there's a, it's, your public it's a, it's an interesting, you know, process. I don't know, no, don't know what else to say at this point, so. Can I, um, can I get you to put that slide up uh, that's titled Considerations to Height? Allie, do you know which direction that is? Uh, it's here. Allie knows. Right there. Mm -hmm. right there. Uh, yeah, right there. Right there. Okay, so just so we have a context, um, these uh, jaggedy little lines here. Well, let, let me let me let me go to the top. So you've got 58 feet, and that's from the, um, the, the parapet, the black parapet that goes to the, to the left where you have your uh, right. laser, right? Yep. Okay, so how, how, much, how much additional height is there that's not measured there going all the way to the very top? And, and there, what? All the way up, all right. the way up, right there. Up, up, yeah, up, up to right there. there. I, how I much more height is that? I don't have that specifically, but I'm, it looks like it's probably another and the developer can answer this, their engineers are here. Okay. Um, what they gave it, you know, typically the, these projections like this don't, at least in the smart code consideration, don't count against the height. But okay. so I'm gonna, but if this is to scale accurately, okay. if that's four feet, I'm gonna say that's probably another four to five feet. Okay, to, so we're gonna be yeah. at 62, so 62 probably, like 62, 63. Okay, so, um, for context for the board and for the audience, 
Um, the Turtle Cove, um, my understanding is that they're at 45. The highest, the highest, the one that's on, the building that's on Roosevelt is 45. So if you go yes. up, if you go, so if you go up these little jaggedies, you go one, two, three, four. So go put your laser up, go up, 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 right, right, like right around there. Okay, so that's where the Turtle Cove um, structures are. R roughly. So we're that, we're, uh, just so people understand, when we're talking about elevation, that's where Turtle Cove is, right? R roughly, yes. Yeah, yeah, roughly. Okay, so we're talking about that much extended height. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? For I staff? have several, but I don't want to get in front of anyone. Go ahead. First, I'd like to say thank you to staff for a <clears throat> very detailed presentation. Allie, you did a terrific job. I, agree. I couldn't ask for oh, much more. But I'd like to drill into something that hasn't been discussed, and I didn't know if it was appropriate, but since you provided a page on it, I thought we could delve into it. Um, I'd like to refer to the Hill Street Vacation page. Okay. And I've got some specific questions regarding, and I hope everyone will indulge me because I have several. Okay. Um, the first, <clears throat> just to make sure we're talking about the same thing, is that everything that's outlined in red there, kind of a red hash, is Hill Street, which right now is a street that people park on and people walk up and down. So and this, it extends to the east and it extends to the west too, right? This, this is Hill Street right, right here. Right. Okay, this, is a, this is an unimproved alley that in their plans, they, they show as vacated. Now, we didn't list a specific condition to that that probably should get added. This kind of popped up late in the game here. But right. we did get it okay. added to this. So this, so, this is a, un, it's a, it's a 10 foot platted alley. Right. I'm more interested in the Hill Street vacation. Okay. So it looks like it's roughly 40 or 50 feet wide and 100 or so feet long. So about five or 6,000 square feet of public domain that is going to be asked to be handed over to private developer is that is that how i understand that uh, essentially yes when you vacate okay. rights of way it will split between adjoining property owners in this case those two lots are both under common ownership so it would become part of this parcel yes okay super um i i, I have to read my questions because my memory is not so good so when and which board oversees that vacation request that goes directly to the board of commissioners okay um don't don't the other owners on hill street the two residential properties to the east wouldn't they have a say on whether or not that road gets vacated as i understand vacations it has to be a majority of owners just curious I no mean, there's, I not, there's nothing that. in the review criteria that speaks to um, if we were vacating something that that provided the sole, provided the sole means of access for those properties, and so basically we were cutting off their access completely. In this case, this is the limits of what they want to vacate. So the rest of Hill will remain open. Okay. Now they wouldn't be able to drive through here. Well, actually, it probably would because they'll be able to go through the parking lot <laughs> if they want to. But um, they're not losing access to to Hill Street. The, those properties that you're talking about. Does okay. that make sense? Um, it seems to me that this <clears throat> vacation of the hill underpins the entire project, yeah. arguably more important than this conditional use. That would be my opinion. I'm curious as to why that vacation application wasn't made first and is being made secondary and don't answer yet because i have a fear that should this board approve the conditional use it will imply a tacit approval of that vacation whereas we have had no input or discussed it in any way 
and that's a that's a very valid question. We kind of went around and around with that. Um, from the staff's perspective, or from you know, we don't want to see Hill Street vacated needlessly. So let's suppose they submitted the vacation. This is a chicken and egg thing, and okay. then they walk away with the prop, walk away from the project. Now we've got a piece, we've got Hill Street vacated. So that was logistically a problem as well. Fair answer, yeah. and thank you, because yeah. I think it was a good question, and you guys wrestled with it. And we, okay. yeah, and we, we were really, you know, you're right that their entire project is predicated on that, and so that's why there's there's the specific condition in there. We, you know, we from the staff perspective and technical review committee, we looked at it very hard as if, you know, would from just from the staff perspective and looking at our codes, is there anything that would prohibit us from at least recommending, you know, a no objection to the vacation? Now it's not our not our choice to vacate, it goes to the Board of Board of Commissioners. So but that's the yes. Board of Commissioners. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. Thank you. So and if I understood right and judging from the photos, it appears that there is going to be a loss of six, and I even counted eight, public parking spaces. Don't comment yet. And golly, the last time I came downhill and was trying to find a parking place downtown, a parking seems to be at a premium right now. And so was the, that loss, complete loss of eight valuable parking spaces taken into account when you were kind of going through things? We we definitely note noted that yes it would be a loss, um, and that that there's probably something that the developer would want to consider in terms of trying to make up those spaces and working with the city. But again, I can't get over out over my skis. I think is the term I like to use. With that, it's <laughs> that, I'm trying to yeah. get you out over your skis. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, um, so that, that was taken into account that, that there's gonna be a loss of public parking spaces if that were to be vacated and the, and the property were to be developed. Okay, um, I, I wanna, no, I'm not gonna come back to that. I have a couple more questions, but I'm gonna go right to this vacation, if I may be so bold. So, um, because it drew my attention and I have a copy so that I could provide it to everybody Interestingly enough, the Florida, Florida Attorney General, um, Miss, uh, well, it was her assistant, uh, Patricia Gleason, they, they did a review of, of vacations, and, and it's about 18 pages long, and I have it here for everyone. And I'm just going to quote a couple <coughs> of elements in regards to municipalities and vacations. And I'm going to read a quotation here. It might be a little bit long. A municipality is empowered. Mr. Bessie, I, yes, I hate to interrupt you. Can you just give me the AGO opinion number, please? Yes, I can. AGO 78-125. So 1978-125. Right. And forgive me, I know that we're not supposed to do anything on our own, but I needed to educate myself. And, and, and you realize you can call me anytime, and I've told you, you know, my job is to be the lawyer here, so I'm happy to advise you legally. Right. Well, it's but not so you. much legal opinion as is that it, 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 it's just, hey, it's a page on Hill Street Vacation, and I'm not so concerned about height and color, but I'm concerned about the fact that the city may give away a road to a developer. Okay, so back to what I was going to read. A municipality is empowered to vacate streets only when the vacation is in the public interest or when the street is no longer required for public use and convenience. I'm not going to read the quotations. If the general public is using the roads and streets in question, including public service vehicles such as garbage trucks, police, fire, or emergency vehicles, then the county should not close or vacate the roads or streets in question as such vacation would be injurious to the public welfare or violate the individual property rights. I have to admit, there's, there's a little bit more. So was, was that taken, so I guess I'd go to staff. So is this development in the public interest and in the public interest enough that it offsets the other public interest to being able to use Hill Street and the parking spaces that are gonna go away? So first things first, the vacation application is not before this board. 
So Agreed. while I appreciate your research and I appreciate your question, that's not for consideration before this board. Second, I have read this opinion. And while you have taken specific lines from that opinion that you've brought out here, that is not what this entire opinion was with, with regards to. So you have two separate kind of issues. You have municipal vacations here, and you have a separate vacation application that is not before this board here. So I'm just going to say we should move on from the vacation. That is not before this board, and we should stick to the application that is before you, which is the conditional use application. Thank you. So, I, I, so I, keep, and keep in mind, I, in I order for this project opinion. to move forward, they will have to get the vacation. Except that this page was provided as part of our package. Yes, and you And heard just like height and color, it kind of falls under and you're right you are correct that opinion is about a reverse in regards to charging and I dropped that because I thought maybe they should pay for it but obviously that won't flow oh, yeah municipality so, cannot charge them for that but it's, it's also about way more than just that simple subject this is a very detailed opinion from 1978 I am mm -hmm. familiar with it it has not nothing to do with what's before you today so I do appreciate that Mr. Vesey but my job is you to be your legal advisor and to make sure that this board stays on task for what the for the record for what application is before you. But isn't that part of the evidence that is submitted to this board? No, if you heard huh? if you heard what staff said that said these were thing they were it's part of the project, but it's not part of the conditional use criteria that you are to consider. So whether it's relevant, competent, substantial elements is for the law to decide, as you well know but you are not here to determine if that vacation is to go through or not. Who decides that? The Board of Commissioners? The Board of Commissioners. The board of commissioners. With no input from any other, from you, us, since it's, on our, it's in, it's, since it's in our packet. I, you know, I still have a couple questions, forgive me, and, and she's right, but you, you are exact, you know that you're exactly correct, and it's not what is in front of us, but I thought it, relevant and worth extrapolating and I'll even remind that at the beginning of her comments staff did discuss the order of which they were to be done in other words it was an option that the vacation could have gone first but it was chosen not to it was chosen to go on second and I want to repeat my main concern is that there would be an implication should this board vote yes for the conditional use, which frankly is a very, fairly easy vote because it complies with that, that we'd, we would be implying that we also approve for the vacation. Well, and you well know that you have the ability to make it known that you don't, but it would, it would be, yeah, you, thank you. <laughs> um, you have the ability to make that known in your recommendation to the Board of Commissioners that you don't necessarily approve of the vacation, but it would be, I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. Thank you very much. We have any other questions for staff? Do you, you, you have any more for staff? Okay, seeing, uh, seeing none, uh, would the applicant like to begin their presentation? I'll wait. Uh, state your name and address and, and begin. Uh, good evening, um, Mr. Chairman, board members, uh, Katie Cole, 600 Cleveland Street, Clearwater, Florida, 33756, representing the developer on this project, which is a conditional use application. The st uh, staff certainly did a, um, as you've already commented, a wonderful job going through each one of the criteria. And I just wanted to speak a little bit generally about those criteria. Um, you already know that this is at the intersection of Hill Street and Roosevelt Boulevard on vacant property that is there. There are two transects that are involved, which is why we're here today. And the location of the hotel is specific to bifurcating those two transects because of um, the design of the hotel and the need. The smaller parcel is on the permissive transect. The vacant property across the street that is also um, under contract, which is currently a parking lot, is in the T5 transect as well. 
but then you would have a use that's bifurcating Roosevelt Boulevard. And so it seemed most reasonable from a design standpoint to present a design like this that runs north-south um, going toward Dodecanes. There's been a lot of conversations, and, and candidly, there was not too much need for our experts to go through each one of those criteria after the findings of fact and the staff report were presented. But we do have the architect and the engineer. But the bottom line is today you're being asked to approve a use and only a use. And as the staff has opined, you certainly have the flexibility to attach criteria for those types of things. Um, let me just talk about process a little bit. With respect to the right-of-way vacation, the site plan approval, conditional use, um, that's a hard discussion and decision on a developer standpoint as to what to do. But candidly, the engineering fees, the survey costs, the architectural fees, those are huge numbers whether they even know if a use is going to be permitted. And so it makes reasonable sense for the first ask on your behalf to be a conditional use application. And that's saying, do you even agree for this use to be permitted on this site? And whether those expenses are necessary. And to your point, which is very well taken, are there conditions that we want this use here, but we're, we don't want to see a site plan that has these other things associated with it? And that's a very fair request and a fair comment that I know that our team would be welcome to listen to, to those types of um, <coughs> feedback and the criteria. We've certainly seen some of you all even post on Facebook that you wanted to see that type of criteria and we're polling your neighbors about it. So those types of things are very welcome here. We're here for this request. But the bottom line is there are very specific requirements in the code with respect to the standards of review for conditional uses. And the application that was presented to you and the evidence that was just presented by the staff show that there is evidence in the record that supports the review for conditional use approval. The conformance with the requirements of this code, it's very clear that a hotel is contemplated in the sponge dock special area district. It's even contemplated in the transect by which the conditional use is, re is requested. In fact, in the T4 transect, both inns and bed and breakfasts are permitted uses, but a hotel is a conditional use. Certainly, the intent of that was to elicit the exact type of conversation that's happening tonight. The use to which the property may be put to appropriate to the property in question is compatible with existing and pl planned uses in the area. Your comprehensive plan, which is a visionary document, your land development code, the special area plan, the transect code, all of these things contemplate a four to six story hotel in this area. That is exactly what's contemplated. The Economic Development Department talks about visitors. Uh, your advertisement, even on your homepage of your website, you talk about visitors coming to the, to the sponge docks and staying there and seeing that, which is why it is a permitted use in the majority of the sponge docks area and why inns and bed and breakfasts are permitted uses in an even broader area because this city, as a policy, encourages this use with certain conditions attached. The conditional use is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the elements of the comprehensive plan. Candidly, the staff outlined several of those, and uh, you've already seen in the special area plan uh, the fact that this is a conditional and permitted use. And, um, the conditional use will not result in significant adverse impacts to the environment or historic resources. And I do think this one is worth talking about. It is not adversely impacting the sponge docks to have a use there, which is what people have asked for. It's what people want. It's what your code and your policy anticipates and encourages by having this as an identified conditional use and approved use in areas of the sponge docks overlay and the Greektown district. The conditional use would not adversely affect adjoining property values. This is a mixed use area. There are single family co homes, there are um, commercial districts, there is industrial, there are marinas. It is anticipated that this intense mix of uses is what is contemplated here. Um, if you look in, your, in, in the special area plan at the list of permitted uses, 
in the, these two transects are perhaps the most permissive transects in your special area plan to contemplate that. The, uh, the conditional use will not adversely impact nor exceed the capacity of the fiscal ability of the city to provide available public facilities. In the packet that was provided to staff included an analysis of utilities and how the water and potable, potable water would be serviced. Um, and the engineer is here and can speak to that as necessary. And the conditional use shall provide for the efficient and orderly development considering the impact on growth patterns and the cost to the city to provide public facilities. Again, by providing a new redeveloped use on, on vacant property, this is an opportunity for the city to gain revenues, not only tax revenues from property taxes, but tourist tax revenues going um, through the special taxing uh, authority of the Tourist Development Council and, and sales tax revenues based on, um, to the state based on the uh, additional tourists that are in the area and that would be inclined to stay in the area. So each one of these are the standards of review for conditional uses. This is an aerial of the um, current concept plan, which is situated on the lot. And I think it's important to see, there's a lot uh, um, to be made of the height and a difference of 12 feet and whether an over, uh, elevator overrun equates to something that is inconsistent with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, generally in the codes, elevator overruns and stairwells and what we affectionately call the penthouse, which just provides access to the roof, are specifically excluded from height calculations because they're necessary part of construction. And um, as you so aptly pointed out, it would reduce the height by an entire story and in essence you would have a three-story building with those um, types of uses on the ceiling or on the roof, excuse me, uh, instead of the four to six which is contemplated in your code. Uh, we do have the developer here, and I think it's important to hear from him about his investment in the community and uh, what his vision for this hotel is. Uh, Mr. Fritz and his family own, I'm gonna ask, uh, can you switch us over? We have a second PowerPoint for you. Um, own other hotels in small communities in the area and waterfront communities, and, uh, and we wanted to be sure you could hear from him about his investment here, so Benedict. Good evening, everybody. Hello, how are you? Um, I just want to briefly talk about me and my family. Um, my wife, Elisa, is here with me tonight. My team is here with me, which is a great, uh, great team. Um, my wife and me went to college in St. Petersburg at Eka College and then graduated also from uh, Schiller University in Dunedin. Uh, later on, we both uh, went to work. I worked at a startup company for Trevor. My wife uh, organized a multinational, multinational company. And we have today two children. One is five, Maximilian, and we just had a daughter and she's just seven months. Uh, I don't know how to. This? No. Oh, okay. Uh, um, my wife and me uh, bought the Best Western in Dunedin, uh, right next to the Bon Appetit in 2011, and proceeded on to uh, build the Hampton Inn in Dunedin in 2019. Um, both hotels are operate, uh, owner operated. I want to just talk about this for a second. My wife and me are not here to flip hotels, sell it off anything. This is a long term uh, hold for us. We are always looking out for the community, invest into the community, and be part of the community. Um, we employ about 50 people that depend seasonal that can go up, can go a little bit down. Obviously, with COVID, everybody has his challenges. Um, in 21, we sold uh, 39,000 rooms and also had about 80,000 guests, which uh, spent their time in Dunedin at the beaches, restaurants, and shops. Here's just a shot of the Hampton in Dunedin, right? Uh, 
we are owner operated, we hands on, we work with everybody, our employees are very dear to us. And this is just a shot that we are in a higher range of ratings uh, on Google. Same thing with the Best Western. Um, so what we are proposing is uh, to work with Hilton. Um, Hilton is a world-class organization and franchisor. Obviously, uh, what we're looking at is the home to hotel brand, which we would be the franchisee. Um, Hilton is an American staple. It's also internationally recognized and has, uh, of, has over 6,800 hotels worldwide. They have top of the line know-how and support. I will elaborate this a little bit later. And uh, Hilton Honors, which is one of the biggest memberships in the world. What we're proposing to build is a home to suites. It's an award-winning extended stay hotel. Extended stay stays are very popular right now in the hotel development community. Um, it allows guests to stay just for one or two days if they like, but also extend their stay for a longer period because it has kitchenettes, fridges, and uh, suites. All home tours are environmentally friendly and uh, the products and the hotel operations as well. Um, we have guest laundry, fitness area, business center, free Wi-Fi, outdoor spaces and uh, available on site and every home tour is pet friendly. Uh, I just wanna say we're not building a restaurant and we're not gonna have a bar or s serve any sort of, of alcohol at the property. Um, there might be a small store where it's available, but again, no bar, no restaurant. Um, what we believe the home tool can bring to the sponge dogs, um, a minimum of 20 jobs. Um, we have, it's an enjoyable lodging facility for friends and family for Tarpon residents. There obviously is a huge need for a hotel in Tarpen at the Sponge Dogs, since there is a million, uh, million or more visitors each year at the Sponge Dogs. Uh, we provide a walking distance lodging facility for tourists that participate in many festivals that are held at the Sponge Dogs. Every year there's festivals at the Sponge Dogs and no guest can stay anywhere close to it and need to go to, I guess, the Neden, Clearwater Beach or Clearwater or Newport Ritchie to get uh, a room to stay for the night. Obviously for the city, it would create a new revenue stream for, for the city. Um, tourism has actually replaced uh, sponging in Tarpon Springs and is now the major, econo major economic factor in Tarpon. Uh, there is a limited inventory in Tarpon for hotel rooms and um, there is a need. My wife and me did a study and it just gave us the answer that this is something that has to be done. Then what I want to really talk about is, so a million, over a million people visit the sponge docks every year. And uh, most of them, or as we heard, 86% uh, are only coming for the day. So what, that, what, the, what do I think that means? Somebody might stay at Clearwater Beach, drive over to Tarpon Springs, take a tour with a, bo with a boat, but leaves after, right? He won't visit the restaurants, he won't visit the stores. A hotel at the Sponge Dogs, obviously, would, would, people, would people make stay overnight, or more than that, and people would spend their money at restaurants, bars, stores, and all the attractions the Sponge Dogs have to offer. We did a study, and we were forecasted that Probably in the first year, we sell over 27,000 rooms, which then 
leads to about 50,000 hotel guests, which in which would then return, uh, which would then visit restaurants and stores, and again participate in many tourist attractions. Um, I want to talk about one thing, right? My wife and me, we're not a corporation, right? We are just me and her family business. Um, we are not here to flip the, the hotel or anything like that. Um, we want to be part of the community. We very, very much invested, invested in the community in Dunedin. And we would love to be part of Tarpon Springs. Thank you. With that, uh, we do have our engineer and architect. If, if there are any questions, we're happy to respond. OK, I do have a, a, a question for, for someone, whoever can best answer it. Uh, does home to suites allow any flexibility in uh, the appearance of the structure? I know that appears to be pretty standard. I've looked at, at other places and uh, didn't see any cases where they, they did have a different appearance, but is it an option to alter this appearance? David Wallace, DLW Architects, 542 Douglas Avenue, Dunedin. Uh, architect with many, many years of uh, designing hotels, many, many Hilton products over those years, along with Marriott and Hyatt and all the others. <coughs> Excuse me, the, um, the brand has already given us some leeway and latitude. The brand does not generally have uh, balconies they generally have a very strict color palette. They've already said that they're willing to work with uh, the planning board and the city requirements to allow this project to proceed. I mean, personally, and I'm, this is a little personal bias, but it's a very modern building. It's very attractive, I think. I, d I don't have a problem with it for the right location, but I mean, I see, I, I've, I've looked at cases like in Fernandina Beach, and in uh, St. Augustine and some other places where they did hotels in historic districts. And generally those hotels uh, relate to the historic districts. They don't stand out a as a very modern and, and very foreign element uh, within the context of the historic district. And there are some Hilton products, the Garden's End or the Tapestry actually would blend in much better uh, but uh, I'm just, uh, I'm not personally certain that the appearance of this hotel fits into the district that, you, that you're trying to put it in. And I, and I would say, I mean, I, I welcome the concept of a hotel near the sponge docks. It, it uh, is something that's really needed and I appreciate you guys realizing the need for it, but uh, to receive real support from the community, it, it's gonna have to fit in. If I can speak to that, um, you mentioned St. Augustine. I currently have a hotel under construction in St. Augustine in the historic district against the river. Um, and it is, uh, it is definitely something is, that is adapted to the, to the design environment that it sits in. We would go through a similar process that we went through there <clears throat> they have a very formalized process. Ours would be more informal and in the context of meetings with you guys and or the commission that uh, would seek to rectify and, and come up with a design solution that was agreeable. Other questions for the applicant? Yeah. I, 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 go ahead, John. Yeah. Um, and this might be for the, uh, the, the, the developer. Um, how long is the relationship or the arrangement with Hilton? Uh, the duration with the franchise is uh, usually of about 20 years. 20. Can be longer than that. 
and then it's extended obviously because obviously the franchise and the franchisor work together and the franchisor is interested in in the success of the franchisee. Uh, let's get the, you're saying a 20, you have to make a 20 year commitment to Hilton? Yes, I, w I, I, I would do this in a, in a heartbeat. No, but. Correct, I, 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 I do a commitment to them for 20 years and they do a commitment to me for 20 and years. And it's a legal, a legal commitment it's a legal, for 20 years. Yes. So that this won't um, 10 years from now be an orphan hotel, right? Yes, correct. I have no plans for that. Going to be with Hilton. Correct. Okay. Um, are are you aware of the flooding problems that happen on Dota Canise and Roosevelt Road? Are you are you aware of those flooding problems? Um, no, but uh, we can address those if there's any concern that there's flooding on Roosevelt. Okay, so both of the, both. I was just gonna respond that the, this is in a coastal high hazard area and there are flood requirements to raise the um, no, I understand. flood proof, uh, yeah, I'm flood just, proof, which is why there's parking, which contributes to the height I'm, as well. So, I'm talking yeah. about getting there and getting out. So, um, but are you aware of, of the flooding problems we have on Roosevelt and Dota Canese? Uh, no, but uh, we have access from three streets uh, to the property. Okay. Um, have you considered a larger footprint and, and only going up four stories instead of uh, five? Um, I would like the architect to elaborate on that, please. Okay. Um, so in response to your question, we considered a bunch of different options and we felt that the <clears throat> currently presented height represented a reasonable balance, not asking for the full allowable height, not asking for the full allowable number of stories, and still accomplish the goal of having an adequate room supply to make the deal make economic sense. Okay, um, now I want you to be aware of that this, you know, this is, this is a very, very sensitive area, right? I mean, this is, um, you know, I, I look around and there's people in here whose families came to Tarpon Springs in the early 1900s, some in the late 1800s. That sponge docks is special, okay? Um, I, I appreciate some of these conceptual renderings, um, and I know that some of these things are placeholders, but this, this rendering here with all these, you know, the, these looks of a large buildings behind, you know, looks like an urban setting, um, or it looks like some hotel that would be at, you know, at an airport. Uh, this is not that. This is Tarpon Springs sponge docks, and like, like Mr. Cuscuta said, we can't take put the genie back in the bottle. This has to be done right. Um, I think that uh, the idea of a hotel is almost universally accepted in our town. I don't. I don't think. I, I spoke to in the last six days. Again, this stuff gets you know, understand how fast these things move. And one of the things is that our frustration, we want to sometimes often want to slow these processes down. You know, I understand that there's dynamics between the, the property owner and due diligence time that's given. And I, and I understand, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a CPA, I'm a businessman. I, 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 I know those frustrations, but this is really special. Okay, this isn't just building a hotel anywhere. This is really special. And, um, you, you know, what? this can be done right, and everyone can be happy. We could have a hotel. We could have something that the majority of, of the residents are happy with. 
but it needs a process. And I ask you, have you had, and I, I know the answer, there's been no um, work, there's been no public workshops, there's been no public town halls, um, and I think those are necessary. Where not just this venue, where people are gonna get up at the podium and say they like it or don't like it, but something where it's interactive and then you guys can build and, and, and like, is it Mr. Frisky? How, is that how you say it? You can call me Benedict this time. Uh, okay, <laughs> but, but you wanna be part of Tarpon. Tarpon would welcome you with open arms. But again, we wanna do this the right way so that we have interaction between our community and you and so that, like Mr. Scuda says, we build something that fits. We, you know, we have a, um, we have a new mayor and a new uh, city commission, and they are working, you know, vigorously on a uh, comprehensive plan, uh, strategic plan, a land develop on a new land development code. On they're they're working on the on on the smart code, all these things, and you know, this area is um, the Tarpon Springs. Greek Town Historic District that was approved by the federal government. Again, there's been, uh, I think the prior uh, administrations were lax in not addressing these sooner, but we can't, we don't have a, a, a time machine, we can't go back, so we gotta, we gotta live with what we gotta do now. But, um, you know, we, and the, the cultural and characteristics, yeah, I see that. The cultural and characteristics of our town, um, not only Greek, but we have a working waterfront. Uh, this is a unique town. Um, you, you know, the, uh, and the, I appreciate the blue and white. It's nice for, uh, you know, like a novelty thing, but that's not enough to, I guarantee, to make the Greek community uh, warm and fuzzy. Um, we need, we need an interaction, and I'm going to ask. Um, can I can I add yeah, something ahead. else, please? Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Elisa Fritsche. I'm the wife of Benedict Fritsche, owner of of the Best Western Plus Dunedin and the Hampton in Dunedin. Um, just wanted to add, and I want to say thank you. We appreciate the comments, and we really admire how much everyone is, you know, putting an effort to be here uh, and to defend the town, because that's what it should be about. It should be about defending what, you know, everyone believes in. Um, and uh, we are, you know, we are Palm Harbor residents. We used to be Dunedin residents before, and uh, definitely visit uh, Tarpon Springs a lot with our family, and uh, we love it. Have many, many Greek friends, and. Um, just wanted to come in to say about the design because I, I know it's been you know a hot topic tonight. So if you see the picture down there of the Hampton in Dunedin, we went through the same process with the city of Dunedin where people were concerned about the way the hotel the Hampton Inn was going to look like. As you all know, the Hampton in Dunedin tends to be also a box, uh, just like majority of hotels today. Um, and with the help of the city of Dunedin and you know um, obviously our architects. Um, we were able to, um, you know, come to a, an agreement and something that really looked more coastal and add a little more flavor to the city. And that's what we probably would like to do here as well. So uh, we just needed to come today and present, um, you know, what the idea is. Because um, we love Tarpon Springs and uh, we see that it is a day trip destination. Uh, destination right now. We want to make it a destination instead. A place where people look forward to come for many days, not just for a day trip for a couple hours and then go back and spend, you know, their dollars in Dunedin or Clearwater or anywhere else. It will be, you know, an adding, it will add, um, you know, uh, value to the city and to the merchants in the city. I'm sure they appreciate uh, a hotel coming into the city just like the merchants in Dunedin did as well. So um, with that said, as you can see, the Hampton in Dunedin is not just a typical Hampton Inn. You see the variety of colors that were added. You see the roofing aspects. So if it's economically feasible, we can come to an agreement and obviously you know, have that discussion. But tonight, we're not talking about the sign. Tonight, we're talking about um, just um, the, the use of the land. So, but thank you so much.
Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you a, new, a unique question. I, you know, we've had um, our, our board here really tries to work with developers and projects. And oftentimes, um, you know, we, we ask things to slow down a little bit so we can get things, so we can get to where we want to go. Um, and again, we, we, need, we need to have community involvement. It, it's critical because this, again, like I said, this is, this is a project that will impact uh, one of the most sensitive areas, the most sensitive area in our town. So I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Would you consider pulling the application and deferring this t until you had a some form of um, uh, community uh, workshop, town hall uh, of that nature? We were just speaking about that. And <coughs> candidly, the request before you tonight is the conditional use, and it's the use. And while we hear everything you're saying about the design, and it is extremely well received, as you just heard from the applicant, and the assurances that they would do that, they're, they're just like you want to see a process that's not articulated in your code, but is your desire. As a purchaser of a piece of property, you have to decide where to spend your money and how, right? Mm -hmm. So um, from the applicant standpoint, there's a conditional use application that's going to get him to first base. Can he even build what he wants to build somehow in some design on this piece of property? And before he knows that answer, is he going to be willing to spend the tens of thousands of dollars that you're asking for for community meetings, charrettes, architectural designs, and other different things um, I, I, I think that we are here tonight to ask you to make a recommendation about the use and certainly welcome and hear all of these comments with respect to the design and what you would like to see going into that design before you all see a site plan come back before you. Uh, I, I beg to differ because I think that if you get that involvement, you'll know whether you can build what the people of Tarpon Springs want. And you're not going to know that merely by us either voting yes or no here. I think you're going to know it by talking to our citizens. So I, 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 then you, can, you need interaction with these folks. I'm telling you that it's, this, is not, this is going to be a problem for you if you don't have community buy-in on this project. It's, it's, too, it's too important. It's a huge structure in a part of the town that has never had a huge st structure, okay? And I, that's, I think that's my point. I think the the several of us at least are, are concerned, I think, that the, the approval of the conditional use permit might appear to be a tacit approval of the drawings that go along with it, and uh, that would be not be something that I, for one, want to do if, if it does. And, and keep in mind, you've mentioned that now a couple of times. So I think that anyone who's paying attention is well aware that that is not your intention. And again, you're not here to decide the site plan approval. That will come back before you um, and, and some of those other things. But again, the only application before you is a conditional use permit. Understanding some of these things can go into the criteria helping, and we've had this conversation before, trying to help the applicant design their project for them is not this board's job. I know you want it to be, but it is not. So at this point, I would just ask that you guys continue to keep, one, have questions, and continue to keep your questions focused on the criteria for the conditional use permit. So just so I can, uh, um my com I guess my comment is this. So you're just saying it's either yes or no without input from this board other than the conditional You, uh, you Yes. And, and as I say in my quasi-judicial announcement, every time we have these meetings, 
There are criteria in your code that the Board of Commissioners has developed. Your job is to take the evidence that's presented and apply that evidence to the criteria. And, and if it meets the criteria, you are required to grant the application. If it does not meet the criteria, you are required to recommend denial of the application. So again, th that's your job. You are not here to be mediators or arbiters or designers or architects and help the developer get to where they need to go. However, that being said, you do have the ability to give conditions that are related to the criteria in the application process to help the Board of Commissioners in making their decision. Remember, your job is to advise the Board of Commissioners from the planning and zoning perspective. And, and, I, and I prefaced at the beginning of my, my comments was that, and one of the reasons this Pandora's box has been opened is because you know, I understand the need to the the, the the need not to spend as much money as possible just to get approval, but you know, I don't want to go down the aisle with a, with a tacit approval on something that we're just going to throw out later on. I'd like to work it through, and I understand where you I understand your comment, but for the benefit of and I'm not I know I'm not supposed to help the the applicant, but I am helping the applicant because. What, something we want to see happen in Tarpon, and we want we want it to go smooth smoothly, and not have to uh, uh, make when they come back with their site plan. There's an expectation. There's an expectation of design, and even though we're not in the design business, but one of the things that Mr. Koulianis had, had addressed, or actually cha the chairman had, had addressed, is there specifics that we want to see can we put those specifics in a conditional use well it's your conditional use so if you're saying that it's not a compa it's not compatible with the surrounding areas and then to make it compatible with the surrounding areas you would condition it on certain recommendations okay. then yes i would say that is something that you can do because that is one of your criteria for your conditional use well, and remember i'm not here to be adversarial I, to you i am I, here to give you legal representation and advise you to make sure whatever the decision you make can withstand an appeal. So I, then I have a question for the architect. Perfect, because this is the time to ask questions of the applicant. Okay. Do you believe the design actually protects the cultural heritage of the Spodge Dock community? The intent of the design that's currently presented was to get the conditional use approval. Okay. It was not intended to be a final design or final solution for the site. We expect an interactive and iterative approach to arrive at a final design. Mike, can I add on to that question? Um, my question is, will you consider an elevation change as it relates to? Of course. So the answer is yes. Okay, I have another question. Um, with regards to the discussions regarding height, will you give consideration to our comments, public's comments, as it relates to height in your decision for moving forward in the next phase of the application process? I'm not the developer, so it's not my financial I'm not, position I'll ask the to state no, the that. Developer, the developer. Benedict. Could you repeat the question, please. Thank you. Well, I'm getting to more specifics. The second part is height. Since we're having discussions about height in the comp in discussion, will you consider decisions regarding height adjustments in the next phase of the process? If it makes economical sense, right, I'm open to do anything, right? Accommodate architecture, right? But everything has a cost, right? Building. Construction is up 30% today since 2018, for example. I just want to make you understand that, like, we're trying to be here, invest into the community uh, uh, a lot of money, a lot of our energy, right, and create something which, which wasn't there before, right, which never has been there for before. And Tarpon Springs has obviously a huge need for hotels since there really is maybe one or two and they are both on US 19, right? So as all the questions were regarding architecture, we, we are open for anything, 
it just has to make economic sense, right? So you're willing... As, lo as long as you understand that, I understand what you're asking. So you're right? willing as part, of this, uh, as part of this phase to, to have that type of discussion with us? A a any discussion. I'm open. Okay. I'm an open book for you. Uh, I will listen to anybody who... Good, good, yeah. good. I've got another one, though. I want to ask you about... Because, you know, I am familiar with the various brands of the hotel chains, and, and I've seen a lot of co-branding done. Mm -hmm. with these hotels. Hilton is, especially Hilton is one. Would you also entertain a co-branding of that ho hotel, such as, good example, I'm not gonna say it's, it's the one I would use, but I see the, you're, are you the developer of Santorini Development? No, I, that's the person who owns the land. I'm, the, I'm okay. purchasing this land. So would you consider co-branding the, the hotel as a means of rather than just be called Hilton home to and have a co-brand and, and put that before Hilton. I'm, I'm planning to have a discussion with them. Good. We would like to have have it uh, named uh, something in the in the in the line of you know uh, home to home home to at the sponge dogs or something with the sponge dogs because the sponge dogs yeah. obviously are very important to us because. It draws a huge crowd. It's very popular. We we understand the value, the value it has to everybody, right? So yeah, okay. but it would be a home too as of right now. Okay. Um, someone, I guess, you, someone behind you wanted to say something. No. Okay. Uh. I have a, my last questions with the attor our attorney. So again, I'm new to this. So this conditional or and the staff recommendations that they made. So as I understand, we can, in addition to what staff is recommending we should address or look at, can, can we add such things as elevation review, height, so and co-branding? Staff did not make a recommendation on this application. What staff, staff recommends, I, reading it, the following conditions. They recommended following conditions. They didn't recommend approval. No, I didn't say approval. Okay. My, so, so my, you can make conditions. You can recommend conditions to the Board of Commissioners as long as they are related to the criteria for a conditional use permit. So if in your judgment they are related to the criteria and you can tie that to the criteria, um, then you can make that recommendation um, or that condition. Keep in mind what we've been mostly talking about is the second criterion, which is the proposed use is appropriate to the property in question and compatible with the area. That's kind of where all of these things have been housed. So we just need to make sure if you're going to make a condition and it falls within that, that you're specific about how you're making that condition. Remember, it's just a, it's a recommended condition based on your recommendation of the Board of Commissioners. Well, I, I think a good bit of it falls under number four also. It does. Uh, the historical environmental, well, and in, the environmental in, resources. Or so historical resources. Right, primarily. resources. Yeah. Thank you. Word in that one. Yeah. Are there further questions for the applicant? Okay, but before we go on into the public comment section of the meeting, uh, we would like to take a, a five minute recess uh, and we'll return momentarily. And before we do so, I just want to remember that this is an open application, so the board members should not be speaking to each other about this application during the intermission. We can talk about other stuff.
back to our places and reopen. All right, this opens our public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, the, the first invited to make public comment would be anyone uh, requesting affected party status. Do we have anyone? Um, Yo. And Mr. Chair, while they're coming up and, and doing that, might I make a suggestion? You know, we've talked a lot about the architectural design of the building in keeping with the cultural heritage of the area. Um, in speaking with staff, perhaps uh, what we can do is as a condition of approval, or if you so choose to recommend approval, um, that an element, that element talking about architectural design, one of those conditions is recommending, if you so choose, recommending approval with the condition that the architectural design and renderings be discussed at the site plan review during the site plan review process. The elevations are already discussed at that time, but if you make it a condition that it must be discussed at that time and it must be decided, then when it comes back before you, what's heard, what's heard and what is gonna be carried on to the Board of Commissioners and what's discussed, then will be addressed by TRC. It will come back before this board and that might be a more appropriate time to discuss what the building is going to look like. As right now, they don't even know if they can build the building in that location. That's really what we're here about tonight. Okay, I mean, would, would it be appropriate then if it was a condition that that the uh, condition would be a, 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 a design style consistent with the cultural heritage? Yeah, I think that's an appropriate recommendation. That's that's a good statement because yeah. that is kind of one of the criteria that is is compatible <coughs> with the historical and, and environmental aspects of the area. So. All right. Now, in the case of affected parties, do they need to state why they're affected parties or, or just we accept that? How, we how do not just work? accept that. And um, yeah, you would need to state your name, your address, and why you think you're considered an affected party. I may ask some additional probing questions. Okay. Well, um, it won't be part of my four minutes while you're asking me questions. It will not be part of your four minutes. It's just to establish whether or not you're just a member of the public or an affected party. No problem. My name is Michael Hulis. I live at 1504 Riverside Drive, Tarpon Springs, but uh, my kids and my brother and I, we own some property that's almost adjacent to this property. It's at 801 Dodecanese Boulevard and 625 Hope Street. Used to be known as Mama Papa's Gift Shop, and now it's a gift shop by a different name that has a residence in the back, and by the way, it has a homestead in it. So there's two homesteads involved instead of one. And there's an apartment on top of the gift shop. Now, am I an effective party, Mr. Counselor? Well, Ms., thank you. Ms. Uh, <laughs> um, and you said that you own that property? Yes. Okay, I would consider it's that, would, based, on the, based upon the location of that property, that you would be considered an affected part, uh, an affected party status. So you may have your four minutes. I thank you. Uh, Mr. Vesey, you came up with a very good point, very common sense about the roadway and the closing of that road. In case anybody doesn't know it, that road, Dodecanese, is closed anywhere between 15 and 27 days a year for one festival or the other. That's the front door to the sponge exchange. The two major roads that are the back door to the sponge exchange are Hope Street and Hill Street. And if we do away with Hill Street, we're gonna be slamming the back door. For, so for safety purposes, it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be vacated. It's an actually used road. It gets reused every day. Even the pictures when they showed it, showed cars up and down. This is not a dead alley. This is the way you, if you're coming from town, going north on Hope Street, when you get to the top of the street and you see that there's a, a festival going on or you see a high tide like today and you see that you cannot go forward, you know what you do? You turn left on Hill Street and you go down to Roosevelt. So for safety purposes, it, you have to have that road. 
And uh, I don't know too much about the law. I used to be involved a little bit, but uh, you had a very good point. And they, in the law, they used what a reasonable man would conclude from the circumstances. Uh, therefore, asking the applicant to make a large and expensive presentation as to what he's going to build and then later find out that that roadway is not vacated seems to be putting the horse before the put the cart before the horse i think it's grounds for your board to table it or reject it because you're asked to do a hypothetical you're asked to pass an application on property that's not under contract or owned by the applicant. It would be like me coming to you telling you I was gonna build a nice hotel in the middle of Pinellas Avenue and uh, it meets uh, all the requirements and later I'm gonna get the city to vacate Pinellas Avenue. That doesn't make common sense. And if you do such a thing, you'll have everybody and their brother making application on other people's properties. Normally, there's a contract for sale. It's under contract, and then they make an application. In this case, it's a hypothetical cancellation of a road, a road that's actually used. And by the way, if you look at all the roads between Dothacanese, Hope Street, Athens Street, you know what the finest road is in, in the sponge docks? Hill Street is curbed is paved nicely, it has a nice slope to it, and it's not just being closed in between the applicant's property. For all practical purposes, if you can't turn and go west on Hill Street, it's no good to anybody. You might as well close it all together and give half of it to Rita Meyer and Ghost that owns property on Hope Street and give the other half to Louis Ackleson because won't do them any good, and the city will be maintaining the roadway as a personal driveway into the applicant's property. By the way, I think the hotel idea is a good idea, but I think he's got to plan it and submit it on property he owns. And for that reason, you can table it or you can reject it just based on that. And that's just pure common sense. By the way, I have a little bit of legal experience, but not much, but I think you, you pass mustard on it. And uh, otherwise, you're gonna open up Pandora's box all over town. Now the issues about the color of the building, the height, all of that is expensive jargon. And why go through that if this road isn't vacated? That'll force the buildings to be in two different locations and may reduce the size, the height, and everything else, and it'll probably increase the footprint, like Mr. Kulianis wanted the footprint maybe to be bigger. But uh, that's common sense. I don't know, but if you have any questions of me, fine. That's about all I have to say on the subject. Thank you. Is with the neck anybody else is an affected party approach? Hello, my name is Irene Kutzerais, and I live at 611 Hope Street. And my house is right on the corner of Hope and Hill. So, it is, I don't know how high they're, they're expecting to close the street. What are they going to leave? They're going to leave part of my property on Hill Street. I can't go down. And like Mr. Hula says, it floods. And when Torekanis floods, nobody can go down. They have Hill Street to go. Or they will be making circles back to on uh, Hope Street. Another thing is I'm concerned, there is a 10-foot alley in back of my property of 611 
609, and it curves past the Philoptochos down to uh, Cross Street. What are they going to do with the alley? Are they going to build right up to the alley? So I have these six floors right on my bedroom. <laughs> so those are the things that you should consider and decide what to do. But Hill Street, it's a very important street for that development. And plus the flooding on, Ath on Dodecanis, when it happens, and it's not only through the hurricanes, the flooding. I know most of you from Tarpon know that. It's also when the tides are high and the tides back into Hope Street and it floods all the way from practically Roosevelt all the way down to Athens Street. So those are things that you should consider before you decide anything else and come back with with an answer to us. Thank you. Thank you. Is, is there anyone else uh, that's an affected party? Please step up. Good evening, my name is John Corliss and I'm uh, the owner of the house at 609 Hope Street, right next to Rita. And um, my concern, I love the idea of a hotel. I like the footprint of this hotel. I like looking out of our parking lot versus directly into the back of a hotel unlike Rita and Michael are gonna have to do. Um, I like that the balconies are on Ro facing Roosevelt out west and not into our homes. Um, I've not been contacted by the developer with any kind of discussion as to uh, things that I understand go along with the site plan, so I, I understand where it's premature on that. But I don't like the fact that this hotel would be 65 feet probably tall. Time to get it a couple feet out of the floodplain to start at base level, go up to 60 feet. And if you get down there, a lot of you probably have, look at those towers that the boats are stored in. Those are only 45 to 50 feet. You go another 15 feet on top of that, the sun's gonna set for us three homeowners an hour early. It's gonna cast a huge shadow fact that I'm not homesteaded there doesn't mean I might not be sometime in the future. I'm using it currently as an Airbnb, be short-term rental, it's working out great, but you know, I may want to be down here full-time at some time in the future, so I may homestead that, or some future owner might do the same thing. So the fact that it's currently used as a short-term rental I don't think should have any factor in the impact to me or future owners. Concerned about the height, I'm very concerned about Hill Street. When they close, are they gonna, are, the developer has not issued or spoken to. What happens when people do wanna take the left or down into Hill Street? Into the, into the hotel parking lot, around the hotel, and out on Roosevelt. Is it gonna be a thoroughfare? What are they gonna do to regulate that, if that were to happen? Um, those are my concerns thank you thank you is there anyone else requesting uh, affected party status hi my name is Georgiana Francis um, I'm an affected party in two senses I live on 15 Athens Street um, and my dad and my cousin are property owners at the sponge docks um, and one day I will be inheriting that property as well. Um, my main concern, my initial concern, and I've noticed it here tonight, even amongst some of the board members, is the rhetoric of the sponge docks needing a hotel. Let it be clear, the sponge dock does, docks does not need a hotel. 
Will it bring value? Most definitely. But the word need is being misplaced. It's a dangerous, dangerous word that politicians use to pass bills and do homework later. And unfortunately, I've seen this already happening within our community. This is conditional use. Misinformation is being spread on Facebook. Oh, it's just so a hotel can be here. No, it is so this hotel can be here, not just a hotel, somewhere in the sponge docks. It is for this specific location, and it is for the Hilton. It is not just for some hotel in the future. And that is how this is being spread. So I want to make it clear that the, the sponge docks has survived hurricanes, the pandemic. Pandemic brought most small businesses and small tourist locations to its knees, but not the sponge docks. We survived it, and we're thriving. I was there yesterday. I drove down Hill Street to park. And that's, you know, the, in, we have local, the locals go to the sponge docks. And they know those areas where to park. Okay, and I went there and it's thriving. We actually, there's just not enough people to work the docks. I saw David running his store, had one store closed. So we're doing good. We don't need this, but it will bring value. I'll give that. Um, and I'd like to, Mr. Koulianis brought up the idea of tabling this until workshops. We've had a workshop, I attended one. It was a joke, but they had one. I think this one will be productive and I think a lot of people will be in attendance. I think the fact that they were not even considering it is something that you guys should also consider in your vote. Um, I also I hear people come up here and say they should caution you. Um, we don't want what happened with Anclote Harbors to happen again. And that will happen if this goes forward. And it's an embarrassment to our city to see that division. We don't want that. It's an embarrassment to Tarpon. It looks like we don't know what we're doing. It looks like, it looks like we don't have a feel for our community. And I don't think that that's true. Um, and this pushing this through without the community buy-in, without the community involvement and interaction. I mean, right here, this guy's just scrolling through his emails. You know, he has no care about what we have to say. And I think that should be notated, and I want that on the record. Um, another point that a lot of people brought up is that the historic, there's no ordinances. Um, and I think it was really interesting um, when Mr. Uh, Kuskutis asked Ms. Vincent that question, <laughs> or, and Ms. Vincent, in the legal field, we would call she objected to the form of that question. She thought it was unfair. But what she did end up doing that was that she proved his point because she said, well, no, that's an unfair question because there is, so, there is no such ordinance. And there can be an ordinance. And as it's been pointed out, yeah, it's not done yet, okay, but we do have a new board and they are getting things done and I think the community has noticed that. Um, there was also some discussion um, and again, there seemed like a very nice family. The Fritzes, uh, so I apologize, my name has been mispronounced more than you can count. <laughs> um, but I don't think they know Tarpon. Uh, Tarpon is not Dunedin. Anyone that's been in Tarpon knows it's not like any other place. Greek, it's not even like people that come from other Greek cities in the, in the country. It is different, it's its own animal. Good with the bad, but that's the truth. Um, and and I know it was poor word choice, I think, but she said that we're here to defend our city. Yeah, we are, but that word choice makes it feel like we're under attack. And I don't like that word choice because we will defend it, but I, I, I don't like that adversarial tone. Um, we got a call time. And Okay, well, thank you. Uh, any other affected party status, folks? Okay, we can begin the general public comment then. Let's begin with uh, public in favor comments uh, to start it out. In favor, yes. Good evening again, Anita Pros, 91 Bayshore Drive. I'm in favor of a hotel down at the Sponge Docks. I, see, I think it would be very good to have one. Uh, and I'm glad that they've come forth. For 30 years, we have wanted a hotel in Tarpon or at the Sponge Docks. And if you recall our previous mayor, that's all he talked about. But it didn't materialize. When I was mayor, they all came down. We had uh, the Holiday Motel. We had the Hilton here. I can't remember how many came, but at that time, they said they couldn't put the money into a hotel in Tarpon because this is a one day destination. Well, with what they've put, the hotel people have presented, 
had given uh, uh, a test to that people would stay. My main concern and why I'm here tonight is, and I know what we're listening to tonight, and I know what the purpose is. My concern is Hill Street. We should not vacate Hill Street. We should not vacate any streets in Tarpon that have been here for hundreds of years, and it is a historic street. Even they said, though they say it's not a historic district. Today, the tide was so high in Tarpon Springs, it was over the sidewalk at the bayou starting to come up some of the steps. That's how high it was. When you went down to the docks and you go down Hope Street, it was flooded. So you take a left and you go down Hill Street. You need that street. You should not vacate any streets because you say you don't need it now, but you may need it 10 or 15 years down the road. We even fought a dirt road that's on the county map and city map not to be vacated because it was maybe needed one day and it can cause a hazard. When you go down Hope Street and there's a lot of traffic and a lot of uh, tourists, you can't turn left or right. Hill Street serves a purpose. So maybe we need to ask them to squeeze in a little bit and not vacate Hill Street. And it's unfair to the citizens of Tarpon that own that property on Hill Street, and we all do because it's within the city of Tarpon Springs, to ask them to give it up. Hill Street is very important to us, very important to the area, and very important to the sponge dogs. That should be a no-no, and I thank you, sir, for looking into the information on vacating streets because we have been fighting it, and I know I've been fighting it for quite a few years. You do not vacate right-of-ways or streets in your community. Next public comment in favor. Elias Garniku, Skatagi, I live at 1482 Hillview Lane. Here to disappoint everyone. Um, I th would be for a hotel there, specifically because it could be used to improve the infrastructure. Like, I, I don't think they should cut that road. That road is needed. Um, and the site plan looks like it has way so much parking, just way too much parking, um, where it would only really be reasonable if that also partially became public parking or the hotel, like, lended out, not rented out the extra spots as public parking. Um, but the hotel being there would incentivize us to do whatever mechanisms we need to do to get the Jolly Trolley running through Tarpon Springs three or four times an hour. Um, and that would be a huge benefit to like everything on Alt-19. It's a pretty good location. It's unfortunate that um, we don't have like enough rentals within the city itself that would be appropriate for this kind <coughs> that's like a standard hotel, but in terms of the elevation, make a taller, smaller footprint, less parking, uh, that would eliminate the need to even vacate um, the road. You can keep it there. Uh, as long as they can, if they're willing, if they are willing to share their parking lot and they are willing to help with the water infrastructure to keep the road draining, everything should be fine. Um, I'm sorry, the time isn't going. Uh, Yeah, the, you, as long as um, the people immediately around it like aren't going to put up, are going to agree, and are consulted with, um, the roads can be managed. And for Dodecanese flooding, um, I think we need to just accept that because it used to be wood docks and it used to flood. It always has been flooded. So if we can move the sponge docks like backwards, um, in terms of like moving the main traffic keeping the, the Dodecanese as the working waterfront road, um, but maintaining infrastructure so that like R Roosevelt, this, this hotel could also help bolster that, where that back path becomes stronger and is cleared out so that traffic can get in and out. Um, I just think a bigger institution in this kind of development would be beneficial in helping the city improve some things such as the streets 
uh, and sidewalks heading to downtown because we would actually have like people um, and people staying all day. Yep. Thank you. The next member of the public in favor. Hi, my name is Julie Russell. Uh, I um, am a resident at 616 Island Drive. Uh, I'm the owner of Rusty Bellies and Pelican Point Seafood right at the end of Dodecanes. Um, I have stayed at your um, hotel in the Best Western, and it's very well done. Uh, I would like to see a hotel on that piece of property. I do believe that it is too large. I mean, there are a lot of things that need to be corrected for it, but I do believe that Tarpon Springs is in need of something like this. And if you are a family person and a person that is willing to come into our town and work with the professionals that are here and spend their time to make this happen, I think it will be beneficial to a lot of us. Um, I am not um, Greek, but I've been in this community for a long, long time, and I, I have said in the past that if you came to me 20 years ago, I would say do it just the way it is. But now that I am 50 years in this city, I want to make sure that we preserve what we're doing and look at what's going to happen in the future because there is a lot of property that has sold. There are a lot of other pieces of property. Before you know it, we, we inundate this town like Clearwater. I want to keep it quaint. Like Dunedin, like St. Augustine is a prime example. If we can do that, I think this could work, but it's going to have to be really uh, small steps like the board has said. Thank you. Thank you. Next member of the public in favor. Hello, my name is Linda Liker. I live at 311 North Ring Village. And uh, I'm gonna make it short and sweet because everybody's ears are probably ready to fall off. Uh, I think it would be a wonderful thing to have a hotel here. I would love to have my grown sons who are in their 50s to have a place to come down here and visit and see me. There's nothing hotel-wise unless you go on 19, which is a nightmare. And I just think it would be nice to have something like that in here. Plus, how many of you have ever been to a home? How many of you have ever been and stayed at a home too? Hilton home too. Anybody? They are fantastic. I don't think I have ever in my travels, and I've traveled a lot, ever stayed at a nicer place than the home to Hilton. It was clean immaculate, the care was wonderful, and I would really, really be a good asset for this community. People will come here and they will spend money. My sons, both of them make six figures each, and I'm sure they would love to stay at a Hilton and they would spend money here. And that's all I'm gonna say. And I love, I love Tarpon Springs, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Next member of the public in favor. Hi, Rhea Sieber, 828830, uh, Dota Um I'm here to speak as a business owner. Um, I'm on the board of the Merchants Association and have owned businesses on the sponge docks since 2009. Uh, we have approximately 1,500 businesses in Tarpon. Uh, we've gone through some hard times in the last two years, and our rents are raising like crazy. My rent went up $2,000 a month in January. So where is that extra revenue going to come from? Uh, most of our business owners that I've talked to are really in support of a hotel because it's it's needed It's necessary uh, Our number one industry in this town is tourism yet. We have no place for our tourists to stay except for maybe the Hampton Inn uh, So there are many reasons for us needing a, a hotel The site plan is not what we're here to discuss and I know that's something that's been a big concern You know for a lot of people and, and for you all tonight um, so what I'd like is to see us go to the next step, uh, is approve the conditional use and then work with the uh, developer and the architects on, on the site plan. Um, I heard a lot about uh, the theme of the sponge docks and the um, historical uh, 
view or the, the look of the sponge docks. What exactly is the theme or the historical view of the sponge docks? Um, several people have said it's really a combination. Uh, there's a lot of different types of architecture on the sponge docks. And this would fit the criteria. This hotel would fit the criteria. So I just you know, want to make that clear that it would fit the criteria. Um, we are a day destination. We always have been. So people come, they spend a few hours here, and then there's a mass exodus. <laughs> I mean, you can just see them marching to their, to their parking lots to go back to the hotel that they came from. So those hotels are making the money instead of Tarpon Springs. We're not keeping it in our community. Um, we, not only would it help the sponge docks, but our whole community. Uh, people would stay here longer. They would visit our stores, our businesses, our restaurants. Um, we did go around as a merchants association and did take a poll of some business owners and we didn't have very much time, two days. So I did give Kim, I think, four pages of uh, signatures of business owners who would like to have the hotel here. And I'm sure there's many more. It's just that we only got four pages so far. Um, so as a business owner, someone who is seeing the rents go up and the need for, for more tourists, uh, I know that, you know, you said that we're doing great down there, but if you don't own a business down there and you don't go through the tourist season and then the September, <laughs> uh, which is always the worst month of the year, uh, you realize that uh, we've got to make up the difference somewhere. And a hotel would definitely you know, give us some of those answers. So I'm definitely in for, um, uh, in for the hotel. And I think that I'll speak for, or they're going to speak for the Merchants Association as well. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sherry Went. I live at 1214 Riverside Drive. I've been here about 10 years. I'm vice president on the merchant board. Um, and a lot of things have been discussed tonight, but I, I just wanted to point out what I'm really hoping comes out of this. It's, it's been probably 10 years since we had a really good possibility of having a hotel. And now we've got people that are here and they actually are willing to work with us. And I'm talking about both sides. So maybe this is the first time ever that, that maybe we can actually find some source of a, an agreement that we can come together. If you don't go forward tonight to at least give them the opportunity to give you the rest of their ideas and we could try to come to a compromise, then after we get through this, probably no one will ever come back to us for a hotel. I mean, this is going to be out there pretty bad. So. I'd like to say, not only am I on the merchant board, I own a store in downtown, and I'm a real estate agent, and I do property management. So this isn't just about the sponge docks. This is about Tarpon Springs, and we have a, a live, viable downtown also. And it's humanly possible that if someone drives down and they stay in the sponge docks at a really beautiful location, they might actually stay a couple of days and then they'll go downtown and they'll, they'll go to some of the other restaurants and they'll visit other businesses and they might even end up buying a home someday. So this isn't just one entity that's involved. You've got your whole city involved and it'll, it, it'll make a huge difference. I'm just asking, I know you've asked a lot of questions, but we're really, we're to the point where are we just going to give this man a chance? And then we could go with all the rest of the questions and see if he will live up to what he said. He's saying, I will work with you. Well, let's just give him the opportunity to prove that. And he will work with us. And then maybe we can actually, for the one first time, maybe we can all come together and agree on something that will really make a difference. Uh, and, and I'm speaking for the merchants that I've, I, and if you are a merchant, you are a business person, then you know that we need more business, more people, and it's going to make a huge difference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, anyone else in favor? Hi, I'm David Gouchman, uh, 735 Dodecanese. I am president of the Merchant Association for many, many years. I've been here 27 years. Ever since I got here, that's all I heard. We need a hotel. So we have an opportunity. I do believe and I hope they're willing to work with the committee to maybe make the adjustments that we're all going to want. 
but I think we really should give him an opportunity and see where it goes. I know there's a Hill Street problem, and we can work within that, work with architecture, design. I mean, I, I, both of my stores are in square buildings, so I don't know what Greek looks like. You know, I know you have the Acropolis in Greece, but you don't have it here. I, I'm in square buildings, so let's, let's call a spade a spade there. So I think give them a chance and see where it goes. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in favor? All right. Let's go to the, the public against the proposal then. Good evening. Uh, Athena Sardulius, 634 East Orange Street, Tarpon Springs. I'm also uh, owner of Tarpon Sponge, Inc., 735 Dodecanese Boulevard, started by my father 40 years ago and I've been there for 25 years. So I think that gives me a little bit of knowledge about what, what is needed down there and what goes on down there. Um, we need, I sh okay, Georgina, sorry. We want a hotel. I have wanted the right hotel in the right location. It could be beneficial to our entire city, but should be more centrally located. I have wanted for years to have a hotel, boutique hotel, take over the uh, abandoned Pappas restaurant and the large parking lot across. It would be central to net downtown as well as the docks. People could walk back and forth easily. I, I hope that maybe that's a location that you might consider. Um, I'm not sure uh, if you are aware of it, but that's a perfect location. Uh, anyway, I am very concerned about Hill Street. Uh, everything everyone's talking about, the flooding, is absolutely true. Uh, most times to get to my business, I have to use Hill Street. I think it would be a grievous mistake to vacate Hill Street. If you all decide to put a hotel here and allow it, something's got to be done. We cannot, be, we cannot vacate that street. Um, I think it's going to be years before the flooding problem is resolved at the docks, if ever. Um, so we have to have more auxiliary roads, not less, to Dodecanese. I just don't think this is the right spot for a hotel of this size. If it could be somehow worked out where it's much smaller, um, doesn't the footprint isn't as large, we don't have to give up Hill Street, maybe. Um, this property, uh, I believe few, several years ago, I'm trying to remember, we were in here. Uh, I don't know if it was another developer that was interested in putting a hotel here. I don't know what happened, it fell apart. Um, hopefully these folks, um, you know, have a, a better luck. But um, honestly, I, I don't think that we should be putting hotels in the center of the Sponge Dock area. Pinellas Avenue is perfect. It's, we've got a flat surface there. We've got that parking lot. We have Pappas Restaurant. It's on the water. Let's really do everything we can to attract a boutique hotel to that property. It's adjacent to US 19 via Live Oak. It's natural. We're not gonna be impacting traffic further on Dodecanese to get to this hotel. So, Anyway, um, I'm sorry, I'm quite passionate about this. My thoughts are being a little scattered, but uh, we have to remember our claim to fame. The working waterfront, the small town atmosphere, the Greek heritage. I don't care if you make this thing look like the Parthenon, it's still gonna be in the wrong place and too big. So um, we're not trying to recreate Greece here, we are trying to preserve Tarpon Springs. Like a lot of what Mr. Andriotis is doing, Tarpon Springs is unique in all of the world. It is a working waterfront with a sponge industry. Thank you very much. Next person against. Uh, Tina Bukovalis, 115 Athens Street. 
Um, and I do want to identify myself as the president of the Greek Town Preservation and Heritage Association, and I am also a member of the Pinellas County Historical Commission. Um, first of all, I want to be clear. I think a small, appropriately designed hotel for the sponge docks would be just fine. But this is not a request that you have for that kind of hotel. This is, this is a request for a five-story, 90-room home suites hotel in a location that has serious problems in terms of access. And it, the size and style are not consistent with the Greek Town Historic District. So I don't think conditional use should be approved without community consultation or until the, the currently being revised city plans are completed a few months from now. Also, the projected traffic increase that is part of the application says there will be 453 extra trips through the Greek Town area. Um, they didn't include staff, so let's just call it 500 trips. They'd have to be funneled through the district, either up Dodecanese or down Roosevelt and then through other streets in the district. Those streets are already overburdened with traffic. I know, I live on Athens Street, and it hasn't been very nice during the last tourist season to have the constant traffic going up and down that street. I also believe that the planning staff have provided an analysis that is flawed in many ways, and I'm going to go through some of that. And um, so overall, I think that the conditional use permit for such, for such a hotel should be refused. So specific uh, responses to staff comments. And if I go over time, I do have another uh, person here who will give me an extra four minutes. Okay, they said the Greek Town Historic District does not establish specific regulations. That is certainly true. In fact, myself and another member of the Greek Town Preservation Association had a discussion in which we touched on that with the staff just last month. And they let us know that they were in favor of such guidelines and they thought it would be very, and they would work on them with us also but probably after the plans are completed, which again is in a few months. Um, but, but when those plans are completed, I can tell you this hotel would not comply with the kind of guidelines we're looking at. Um, they say Greektown is comprised of various building types and uses from one-story residential structures to the Turtle Cove storage, which is four stories. Well, really, in that area, it's mostly one or two stories, with maybe Pappas is three stories, Turtle Cove is four. It is also not technically in the Greek Town District. The other, the, later on, the staff provided other um, building types. They, call, they talked about the Philoptahos Hall and said it was 35 feet. I checked on the county records. It's two stories, and I also checked, tried to check online, and typically two stories is only 20 some feet. So it, I don't think that's 35 feet. So they talked about the Tarpon Tower. That is literally two miles away and it's near 19. I don't see how that is relevant at all. The, they also say the proposed hotel color palette was chosen to complement the Greek heritage. Greek town is not Greek Disney World. Uh, we are a real Greek community, and there is a vernacular architecture in that community, and it's not the architecture of the Kikladis Islands, which is, is that the four minute? Yes. Oh, okay. Do, I, do you need the name of the person giving me the minutes? Okay, the blue and white is of the Kikladis Islands. The sponge exchange was also built in a style not typical of the Dodecanese Islands, which is where most of the people in this town are from. Uh, Tarpon Springs, architectural style, and most of it in the central part of the sponge docks and in the residential area is a Florida vernacular, and I think the staff probably needs to read up on that. Most of, the, most of the buildings in that area are brick or wood. Um, also, uh, they talk about special area, um, 
uh, considerations. Uh, again, these plans are being revised. Many items in the plans, which were written in, in 2011, which was before the Greektown Historic District was put on the National Register, were, were shot down during the community debate in 2014 over the city's proposed gentrification of the sponge docks. Many of the elements are still in that plan, but the city opposed them. So why would we go with, the, with SAP at this point when it's currently being revised and we know that the community opposes it? It makes no sense. Uh, also, they say, um, Again, lodging facilities and walking distance of the sponge docks is part of that plan. Yes, but near alternate 19 would make better sense in terms of access. Um, also, uh, I think there is a problem in looking at the area and that is constantly being referred to as a business district. Actually, there, are, there is a full residential district in just a few blocks of that site. And you can see it on the photographs, but it's not really referred to. The business district on Dodecanese is just as far away, and that is what is being referred to, because it's part of the special area. But should we overlook the needs of the residents that are just as close? I think not. Comprehensive plan considerations. Most of the, they say that uh, that this complies, and they've looked at all the uh, comprehensive plan considerations, but they are only talking about the future land use element, not the historic element. Uh, and I think that is of primary importance when dealing with the Greektown Historic District. This is a unique district in the state and in the country, and having a hotel that's five stories, totally out of character with almost any other building in the city, in blue and white, which isn't appropriate, in a style which isn't appropriate, is destructive to the character, to the historical character of the city. Um, also, there is a policy in the historic resources element that talks about the city studying the residential area. Now, they were talking about the downtown historic district, but that they wrote this before the Creektown district came into being. That the city should study um, the residential area and the commercial area of the historic districts within three years to evaluate any conflicts between zoning regulations and the goals, objectives, and policies of the historic resources element. That, as far as I know, was not ever done. Um, also, I find that um, when the staff has referred to uh, uses uh, that the property has been uh, put to, um, the SAP also talks about balancing the needs of the business part of it with the needs of the residents. And I think, again, that should be uh, maintained uh, in any consideration of a hotel. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker against. Hello, my name is Chris Christopoulos. Um, I live at 1406 Ford Avenue. Uh, also, have my uh, property owner at the Sponge Docks. My family has been in business at the Sponge Docks. Uh, if you don't recognize the name Christopoulos, you probably recognize the name Boleris. Um, that's my family. And um, while I know that there is uh, a desire for more, um, you know, for for hotels and for and for stays for for uh, folks visiting Tarpon Springs, tourism is uh, our lifeblood. Uh, I think we have the opportunity to exercise patience here, in that, um, as Tina eloquently stated, uh, while I think what plagued us tonight is the fact that everyone knows that there is a need um, for a vision plan and for uh, and and that's in the process. I think. Uh, a plan is coming, and I think we need to exercise patience for that. Uh, and the reason that I think we have, we can exercise patience is that uh, an undervalued 
um, resource that we have are short-term rentals like Airbnb. I just did a quick, I don't own Airbnb property, but I just did a quick uh, search and there's like 300 uh, available locations in and around Tarpon Springs. And so I think there's been a paradigm shift in what we look at in terms of available uh, places for tourists to stay in and around Tarpon Springs. Um, so while I think a hotel would add value uh, it is not urgently needed, and therefore we can exercise, because, it, you know, make no mistake, uh, Hilton will protect their brand, and they do have a brand identity, uh, and it's time, and I think we're in the process of building our brand identity, uh, and it, we, we know we all need one, and we know we don't, we don't have those parameters or that, uh, um, those design parameters codified. Uh, we need to get to that point, and we need to do that before we, we can do this, so I would ask that you uh, at this time, reject this plan, and let's uh, let's not put the cart before the horse. Thank you. Hello, my name is <clears throat> excuse me, Annie Samarcos, um, thirty two West Tarpon Avenue. There was a gentleman sitting next to me at the start of the meeting. I didn't know he was going to be at tonight's meeting. He is in town for a few days, a wise and holy man, and he was getting ice cream in town, and he was wandering the streets, and, and three of the people that are here tonight saw him and brought him to the meeting, and he knew this was an issue tonight and on the agenda, and he had to leave, but he did want this to be said. I don't like public speaking. Um, he said the building of such a hotel would be the beginning of the end of the sponge docks as we know them. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker against? Good evening, my name's Michael B Angelo Belaris, 365 Waterford Circle Court, Tarpon Springs. Um, resident, but also family, like my cousin Chris, has been vested in the sponge docks and had our footprint there for, since the early 1900s. Um, while the idea of a hotel in Tarpon Springs is good, and like Ms. Bukovas had stated, what parameters or what guidelines do we have to go to protect us? The gentleman said in his development in St. Augustine that he's had to f fly through a lot of hoops. But in following in that, he also said that he wouldn't have to do so here. So what guidelines do we have to help us and protect us through this process? The city attorney said that whatever suggestions that you want to make can be attached to this. Well, who is helping you in that decision? Is our preservation society helping you make those decisions or make those protections for this area? Who are you falling back on? Is this whole decision just being placed on you or do you have another resource at your advantage to help you make this decision? Also in regards to, we, like we were talking about the flooding down there and the, the use of Hill Street. Hill Street would be cut off, it would be effect, effectively the back entrance to their property. When flooding is going on down there, all these people utilizing that property, where would they need to go? Up Hope Street, up other avenues. We all know during the top tourist seasons that those roads are congested, people are using them for parking, sometimes cutting down two-way lanes to a one lane. Just like our merchants say this would help bring in more tourists during what time of year? Any merchant or any family that's been in Tarpon knows our tourist seasons are seasonal, not all year round. So granted, it may bring an influx of people during those times, but what happens outside of that? What uses of 99, a 90, 99 room hotel during our off season? What's it going to do for us? What's it going to provide? don't know. Thank you. Any further speakers against?
All right, seeing none, that brings us to the point uh, where first staff would have the opportunity to make any rebuttal or closing comments. None, thank you. No, okay. Then uh, the applicant would have the opportunity to make any rebuttal or closing comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, Hold on, excuse me. Michael, do we, do we have to call timeout? He, he can't leave, right? And come back and vote? I mean, he can, if he has to use the restroom, he can leave. He shouldn't, but he can. <laughs> All right. You've told us before we can't. I mean, this is argument. It's not necessarily evidence. We've heard a lot tonight, and I think we need to recenter some of the things that we've talked about. There's a conditional use application before you with specific criteria. There are no architectural guidelines. There are no codified historic guidelines. There is not, as you heard evidence tonight by the people speaking, any type of cohesiveness. You have the Sponge Docks Merchants Association and then you have representatives from the Greek Town District. Most importantly, there's a lot of references to a code that may be discussed and may be drafted and may be presented for consideration to the community after a process, but there is nothing other than your code of land development code, your special area plan, and the comprehensive plan as it exists today. And the applicant has brought an application forward that has been reviewed and has evidence in the record with respect to how that application meets the criteria as it exists today. Make no mistake, the applicant heard you very loud and clear about your expectations about design requirements, the concerns about vacating Hill Street, and all of those other things that would come back during site plan approval but the applicant is asking tonight to move forward to even get off, you know, get out of the batter's box, I guess, for lack of a better description since the Rays are playing. Be able to move to the next step and even get to that process where they can have those conversations, discuss it with the Merchants Association, discuss it with staff, discuss with the historic district. But tonight, the request before you is the approval of a conditional use application where there's been evidence entered into the record of compliance and consistency with the criteria. And while we heard a lot of opinions of how people don't want you to act on tonight's application because there are outstanding questions, there's no alternative evidence that's in the record. There's simply suggestions of how to make the ultimate site plan process go more smoothly. And we would res respectfully request you allow the applicant to move forward by recommending approval to the city commission so these conversations can continue and hopefully get to a point where everyone can be happy with the project that's proposed. Thank you. All right. That, uh that concludes the comments and that brings the item back to the board for consideration. Uh, in order to get to our discussion, we need a, a motion and a second and then, then the board can discuss. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and make a motion. I make a motion to approve based on the following conditions. The conditions as set forth by the by staff. In addition, uh, additional conditions that, that the, uh, the, uh, it'd be a four story max, um, no restaurant or bar as they indicated. 
that uh, prior to site plan approval that the right of way to Hill Street needs to be vacated and that the building design needs to be consistent with the cultural heritage of the sponge docks. Doesn't necessarily mean Greek, but the cultural heritage or the heritage of the sponge docks as a, as a working port. That's my motion. Can I ask for a clarification? Did you say that Hill Street would be vacated? That's right. I, I put it as a, as a condition that prior to any site plan approval, that uh, the vacation of the right of way of Hill Street must be approved, must be approved before any site plan comes in front of this board. Because I, uh, and I'll give you my reasoning if, if you want to. Well, I think yeah. we should wait for a reasoning right. until there's a second. Oh, there's a motion. Do we have a second? Before a second, can I, can I ask for a, uh, an amendment on that? There's a motion on the floor. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm asking him to I'll, amend I'll, his motion. I'll, let, I'll entertain, entertain a, a, an additional condition if what you have. That Hill Street not be vacated. I'm that not this, saying that, that it this, is. This, I've, strategy, I've th this, this plan needs to be made without the vacation of Hill Street. Well, I, 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 think, the, I think the vacation of Hill Street is outside of our purview. We don't, we don't, want, him, we don't want them wasting more money if yeah. Okay, so now yes, we're yeah. having a discussion on a motion that's on the floor without a second. So yeah. we can have a second for purposes I'm, of discussion. I'm, I'm, I'm I understand. Yeah, we I can understand what excuse you're saying. me. I'm asking him to revise his. his and and his I understand. Mike, will that. you entertain that? I no. There is a motion on the floor. You are asking for a completely different motion. You can second it for purposes of discussion, not meaning you have to vote on that motion doesn't have to have a second, then it fails and another motion can be made. Well, I'd like a second so we can discuss it. All right, I'll second it. Right. Okay, now uh, we can have board discussion of the motion. There we go. Okay. Um, my thought is this, John. Okay. Before a site plan is approved, the, the, the city, and I, and I think I think staff is going to be important because I'm very familiar. I think everybody who lives in Tarpet Springs and those of you in the Sponge Dock area, and, and just so you know, I own property. My family home is on Athens Street, and I still own property on Athens Street. Um, they're right when, when there's a high tide. And I've many, many times I've gone down uh, Hope Street just to take a left and go down Hill Street just to leave. And I think that is something that the city is going to have to significantly address before there's uh, 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 any site plan approval. And that's why it's conditioned. And, and so the onus falls on the city commission and staff to come up with a resolution as to how to address that problem because it is a significant problem. Okay, and then going down Athens Street, I've had to back up because the flooding has come up Athens Street. So I'm suggesting in my motion that before there's a site plan approval, that the vacation of the right of way is, is required. Yeah. Or, I mean, the other option would be that for them to decide to leave the street there and work around it. But so that's. If they're, if, uh, if, but then, if they then, then it's not required, that. then it's, it fails. Mm -hmm. For my mo that part of the requirement is, becomes moot. I'm, I'm in support of Board Member John's idea of amending <clears throat> the motion to be a bit more strict and take the vacation off the table. Mm -hmm. Just my opinion. In fact, the whole project is, is null and void because there's not a logical argument for the vacation of Hill Street. It's fatally flawed. And I think it would be relatively easy. The architect has probably already worked through it in his mind. Hill Street is only one of their problems. Stormwater was never brought up because it wasn't brought forth. They're thinking about doing vaults, which is strange. But there certainly is alternative site plans where they can leave the street in place, still use both parcels, i.e. North Parcel becomes their stormwater retained in maybe 10 or 15 parking places for the city. The building is moved south 
and they address it there. So there's plenty of alternatives. I would support the amendment to that so that there is a moving forward, but yet Hill Street's taken off the table at this meeting. That's it in my comment discussion. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Kuskudis, maybe I'm not understanding your motion. You, you are putting a condition on Hill Street being approved or vacated? I'm, I'm making it a requirement. If they, before they could submit a site plan, they have to go through the city process of vacating, vacating uh, Hill Street. Great. If they have to uh, uh, redesign their, their, their project to not vacate uh, Hill Street, then they have, they, when they come in front of us with a site plan approval, then that part of vacating Hill Street would not be part of any site plan because it would not have been vacated. So that's what I'm suggesting is that, that we make, before I look at a site plan, let them go through the vacation process. And that's, that's, and, and, and that's my but, condition. But are you, are you intending that if they decided not to vacate it, ultimately they, could, they would have the approval still and they could come back with a, with site a plan, plan with a site that plan. didn't include the vacation? That did not include the vacation. Okay. And that way they, they'd have to uh, alter their design to, and remember, I, my, uh, the other conditions are, are you know, the four story. So they'd have to alter their design to be uh, 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 consistent with maybe having to squeeze everything on one parcel or separate the two parcels with Hill Street Steel being open for public access. That well, and, and I would say, I think that that approach sort of, uh, I don't know, in my mind may make a little bit more sense uh, while I, I agree with the concerns about Hill Street, but it's not really our purview to decide on, on the, the closure of that street. That's the BOC's I know job. That, but I'm making my, my. Right, uh, no, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His revised motion somewhat addresses that because it gotta go through the process first of the vacation of Hill Street. Yeah. I don't want to look at a site plan unless it's vacated. And if, if it's not or vacated, vacated or an alternative design is submitted correct. to address the non-vacating of the correct. Yes, that's right. there. That's where they were trying to be. All right, and I have a question on one of your other. I want to see I want to see that I want to see the issue of Hill Street addressed first. Yeah. So so the motion was that they were required to get the vacation before they come back with a site plan review. Correct. Or what I'm well, that was the motion. Okay. So You're what right. I'm hearing and is that there may be an amendment if it's not the alternative, which was potentially the amendment before, there may need to be an amendment to change that verbiage to say that the vacation either needs to, it needs to be settled, either it needs to be approved or they don't need the vacation and an alternative can be had before the site plan comes before you. Uh, but, but, yeah. but here, here's my point. If, if a vacated Hill Street is really not on the table for any of us, why are we even putting this condition? Why are we taking the why are we taking the applicant down some road that is going to end negatively if we're not going to if if Hill Street isn't on the table to be vacated? Because we're, uh, no, I, I think you're reading it wrong, John. Okay. Okay. I, I'm saying that before I see anything, the issue of Hill Street needs to be addressed and resolved and resolved. Okay, and that's kind of what my motion is saying. Okay, and, and maybe it needs to be worded differently, but that's what I'm saying. Hill Street needs to be resolved before I want to look at a site plan. And forgive me for interrupting. Um, wouldn't the best result for that would be to deny this application altogether, and thus they understand that they need to address that vacation first and then return? Wouldn't that be an alternative path? Uh, we. I, you, I guess you can deny it, but I, I quite frankly, I, I sense the, 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 the need for a hotel. I, I want them to go, have to go back to their drawing board. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't want to get a blanket denial. I just want to give them, give the applicant an opportunity 
to meet the conditions before they move forward with the site plan instead of just a blanket denial. Well, why not send them down the drawing board without Hill Street? Thank so you. That, I'm sorry, John. Why not mm -hmm. send them to the new to the drawing board without Hill Street? Okay. Vacated? Okay. But I, and I get what you're saying. Okay. I'm, so I I've, I've got a motion. I have. And and um, if it doesn't pass, then no, then we'll just move forward with another one. And yeah. And Allie just pointed out to me one of the conditions, and I believe your motion was that it was to adopt the staff's recommended co In conditions. To my recommendation. Okay. So one of their conditions is that the approval needs to be conditioned on the partial vacation of Hill Street. So your condition that you've added on the, the vacation needs to be remedied one way or the other is slightly conflicting with staff's condition. So I would suggest that an amendment be made to address either the conflict or well then strike the staff's recommendation and just use mine. <laughs> well so the, I mean, amendment needs to be made either way so for clarity for clarity strike uh, my, my i bend my motion to strike the, the the recommendation from staff and to substitute my recommendation just ju just the recommendation of staff regarding the vacation of hill street correct and then to substitute it with your recommendation that the hill street vacation be addressed either way either removed or decided on by the commission prior to the site plan coming back before this board correct is there a second to that amended motion i second okay I have a question about the amendment though you're saying that you want to put a max on four feet four story four okay is that something four that we feet? can even I don't know. or i'm sorry four four stories i'm so four. sorry <laughs> four <laughs> yes, i only wanted four feet um, <laughs> is that something that we could actually do at this point without even a site plan or anything with any kind of discussion is that what it's in my motion. If you want to discuss elevate uh, size or height, then you can. I guess we, you can, but that's in my condition. I mean, it does. We, we talked about height kind of going to the compatibility of, of the use with yeah. surrounding with the surrounding area. That criteria number two, mm -hmm. which is kind of where we've pigeonholed that, or where I've assumed we have pigeonholed that one. Yeah. Um, again, you're making a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners, so. so. But putting it with a, well, you can either approve this with a max, isn't that kind of putting a limitation on it? Wasn't there saying? It is in fact putting a limitation on it, yes. So. Okay, we, we have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion. Yeah, I have to. I, I have to say, I, th I understand the concerns that are coming through here. I understand that everybody has a concern about Hill Street and everybody has, you know, that, but ultimately there is a desire to have a hotel here. And we have to remember this is just for conditional use. If they don't sit there and look at it and say it's conditional use at this point, they're not going to be able to come forward and bring us information and other things that they want to do with this. So we need to actually, in my opinion, we need to actually see if they're going to give us what we want also we can't just stop and tell them no you're not that, getting anything that's part of the condition yeah i think we're, we're agreeing we're just adding some but conditions I, I don't i just don't like the word of max where you're sitting and putting a limitation saying you have to do this no. i have an issue with that you should we should be able to and let them no. at least talk to us and, and say vote that. no okay is there any further board discussion yeah i have some dis i have some points um, I just want to kind of summarize all this, this thoughts and talks we've had tonight. Um, I did, I did my own little survey, um, in different, in communication with about 60 residents and citizens. And, um, the number one overall consensus is that we would like a hotel. So we start with that, that we would like a hotel. Um, the second most critical item was the design and compatibility. Um, you know, I know the gentleman spoke like what's, what's compatible. Um, Mr. Hulis would know when Pappas restaurant was built, um, it was built, uh, and I may be wrong, but 
it was built to look like Santorini, right? Okay, and it was, it was white, um, and it had a Mediterranean architecture that blended beautifully with the docks. And wish you guys had never sold it, and it would still be there. It was, it was, it was Tarpon Springs. And that had, a, that had a design. There was a thought to that design, and that design fit our Mediterranean um, uh, look of, of tarpons, of the docks. The third um, item that came up in, in my little survey communications was location, okay. Um, Pappas, the Pappas restaurant location was the number one by far when given a choice if they could have it near Rusty Bellies or they could have it where the Pappas is. Everybody pretty much said Pappas's. Now, we don't have that choice because we don't have somebody coming forward to say they build a hotel in Pappas's. Um, but that was, I'm just telling you what, what it was. And then the fourth most important item was, was height. And I think the height is not, and, and I, I'm gonna be in agreement with M Melissa on this, I don't think the height is as big a, a concern if the design is right. Um, and it can be designed with Hill Street not being vacated, and there could be a compatible design. Uh, yeah, I would prefer it came down a story, but I don't think that's the only, uh, you know, game breaker. Um, I know we're talking about uh, our strategy. We have, a, we have two of them here, our mayor and our vice mayor here tonight, which we really appreciate the fact that they took their time to, to come out, and, and it means a lot to, to all of us, and that we are working towards something that's been, um, that's been neglected, having a, an updated comprehensive plan, which we wish we had had when Enclote Harbor came up, and how difficult it was for us with the outdated plan. Um, a land development code and a smart code that would address architectural guidelines. And the fact that you say, well, we don't have that, so we're gonna, we, this can go through. Well, you know what, it's our town. And regardless, it needs to be protected. Um, you know, we have the, the um, as, as I mentioned before, the, the Greek Town Historical District, we, we have that designation. I don't know, would we have that designation if we just built anything and threw it in, in, the, in the Greek Town area? Would, would we still have that? We've had designations pulled from us before for not following architectural guidelines uh, in the past, so we've had that. And, and um, you know, when, oh, and also when we talk about location, uh, the flooding that is, happens on Dota Canise and Roosevelt, and, and, and I'm sorry that the applicant doesn't know about those things, but they're pretty critical, and that's why obviously Hill Street is, is uh, paramount that it stays open, because if you're leaving any of those areas, you gotta get high, and the only way to get high is to get to Hope Street, and you gotta have that Hill Street to get up there. So that's, that's without, without saying. Um, and we're not desperate. And um, like Ms. Franzi said, you know, we want a hotel. Um, uh, you know, when we put the word need, uh, that's, I'm not sure that that's really the right word, but definitely we want a hotel. And we want it right. And what we're saying to you is that we want to work with you. But when we say we would like to have a, a town hall or a workshop, it's not gonna cost tens of thousands of dollars. You can have this room. I'm sure the mayor would make sure that you got this room and people would come and you talk to them, you put your presentation, you listen to them. It won't cost tens of thousands of dollars to have that, 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 uh, that kind of a thing. And that would go miles to having us come together, like, like you said, oh, we're, we're fractioned. No, we're not fractioned. We agree on a, that we want a, a hotel. What we need to crystallize is exactly what we want. And I'm sure that we can figure out a way to work together. 
but it's not going to happen if you say, oh, well, we have this guideline, we met the guideline, damn it, we get a hotel. No, nah, not really. Um, so, and I understand that uh, I'm a CPA, I understand you have to have an economic return. We, we get that, but we could work together. Really, we can work together, but let's do it to, together. And if it takes an extra 30, 45 days to get this project approved and you do it the right way, then you will have a, an accepted project that the community has embraced and not something that was just taken down the, the fast road. We've been through that before and we don't want to do that again. So that's my two bits. Okay, I guess we, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Now, after this, this goes back to the height requirement, I'm not going to withdraw my motion, but if the applicant presented a design that blended and had some architectural details to it that didn't look as out of place based on its height and that's something that I think I would look at again but but right now I'm, I'm pretty set on my motion so I have one question it's kind of, and it's kind of late at this point to ask it probably with the motion but uh, would you consider amending the motion to to request that they also have a public input gathering session uh, that the city will help arrange so that is not a condition that you can add as it is not related to the criteria in the conditional use application i guess that answers that question guess not then okay. <laughs> but i would put it in <laughs> okay. So. Okay, well, I guess that uh, brings us to a vote. Can we uh, have a roll call? Can I, can, I hear the, <laughs> can I hear the motion one more time? So <laughs> make sure you got to make me do that? You got it. I got to okay. hear the, uh, the uh, final draft. I can, I can draft. read what I have yeah, if staff, you'd like. Can we, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. One of us can read what we've got. Mm -hmm. To approve like application 22-37 like as presented with the conditions recommended by staff with the following additional conditions to strike staff's recommended number two, recommendation number two, that there be a four-story maximum, no restaurant or bar, the vacation of the right-of-way of Hill Street must be addressed prior to site plan being brought forward, the hotel be designed so that the cultural heritage of the sponge docks is preserved. Thank you. Everybody, that, is that that's correct? That's correct. Okay. Mr. Andriotis. Yes. Mr. Zimbellos. Yes. Mr. Koulianos. Yes. Ms. Vigil. Yes. Mr. Vesey. No. Mr. Kuskudis. Yes. Mr. Seaman. Yes. All right. That brings us to staff comments. Um, no comments other than the items you talked about last Monday night. We're going to be kind of organizing those and bringing them back uh, to Mr. Seaman and kind of make a list to put on your next agenda. Thanks. And if I could, I know I'm not staff, but I did want to, um, just something that I observed tonight. We had discussed, and to kind of piggyback off of what Pat was saying about the suggested changes that we talked about at the workshop. We had talked about separating the applications into individual applications. So tonight, that was an example of separating the applications into an individual application. And yet, all of the other things that were discussed were other parts of the application, like the site plan, the vacation, things like that. So you can see how it's kind of difficult for staff and difficult both for you guys. It, it's it's going to be a balancing, so we're just going to need to discuss how that's going to kind of work maybe what types of applications get separated, what types of applications don't. Um, I think tonight was a really good example of, of how giving a lot of information 
may have detracted from the apple actual application that was before you. I um, so I think that I think it's just I uh, just wanted to point out that I think that's something that's a good thing that we can discuss at the next meeting when we're talking about recommended changes to the board of commissioners. Yeah. Chairman, Chairman, can I? Can okay. I ask? Are there board comments? Yeah, there's a board comment. I have a board comment or not? Um, you know, when we had our workshop upstairs, we talked about having um, being able to go to the commission meeting and have a representative go and speak about what the concerns we had here. Um, I'd like to do so. Yeah, I, th I think we should definitely have a representative on this one. Yeah, and, can, we tonight? And can, can we do that now? Have you already adjourned the meeting? No, no the meeting adjourned. hasn't been adjourned. We're still on board comments. I'd also like to point out that two of the commissioners were here tonight, so at least two of them understood what your your position is. They can certainly talk about that in discussion too. But if the if the board would like to, by a majority, we don't have to do a roll call, but a majority vote, I would suggest nominating somebody, seconding, just like we do chair and vice chair positions. Chair, I'd like to uh, nominate John to I'll represent second. the board All good. at that yeah. meeting. Okay. Okay. There are a majority, can, yes. we'll call it a consensus even though that's not what it is. Can I just get a show of hands for the record? Hopefully All right. Great. And uh, that was for the application you just heard, correct? Correct. Right. Right. That is scheduled for May the 24th for next Tuesday, Board of Commissioners. Questions. Thank everybody. Wait, 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 wait. We, had a, we had a question from the board. With that mode that you made and passed, does a representative from the planning and zoning attend all that's what I'm no, no no not the board the planning and zoning department does yes. Renee yeah. go to every event so that she's there while he's there to provide that update and she's listening uh, to it well and yes so there is a there is a member of the planning and zoning department usually it's Renee or Allie um, or Pat, uh, but also keep in mind that they are there to represent the city. They're a party to the application, so they're not necessarily there to. No, they'll, no, they'll, they'll to talk about the boards. It's not about being in support of. It's just to make sure that what message yeah. is conveyed from us is consistent. Well, and, to and what keep they in mind, today. right? And keep in mind, your meetings are are on are on YouTube, so anyone can watch them. Um, but but also. Guys, the meeting has not been adjourned yet. I'm just going to sit so long. I, I, and I'm okay with standing, but collecting things and walking away is. <laughs> Show Erica some respect, guys. <laughs> not not here. Um, anyway, so uh, I would, I would, you know what? It doesn't matter. No, go ahead. No, no, I need to nah, talk to you. Have a good evening. You can adjourn it now. <laughs> We're still not adjourned. No, nope, we are still not adjourned. We're still okay. not adjourned. Don, we're not adjourned. This, well, I did say it a minute ago, and, okay, and in the I did that. Somebody's comment. That's what I thought. I thought he did. I heard he it. Did. He did it. He I did, did it. Adjourn it.